those in the bin provided, because if me has to pick them up, it's the left in the doorway. Okay. Morning, Rita. Well, how did you go on? What happened? I don't know what you're talking about. You and Derek last night. Oh. What did he have to say for himself? Did he take you for a nice meal? Did he kiss you? Now, start at the top, leave nothing out. I want the lot, blow by blow. There's not a lot to tell. Oh, come on. Prince Charming rides back into your life and you tell me there's not a lot to tell. Stop teasing. Tell me what happened. I didn't waste my time going to meet him. You stood him up. <laughs> if he was there. Oh, come on. He said he'd be in the Rovers waiting for you. Oh, it doesn't matter what Derek says. He's very good at letting people down, isn't he? Well, I was going to go there. I, th I thought, what's the point? What is the point? Well, you could say that about anything. You could say that about going out of bed in the morning. Yes, I know that, and I do sometimes. But, Rita, don't you think I've wasted enough time and worry over Derek Wilton in the past? I mean, why get on the same old roller coaster all over again? Oh, why get on the same old roller coaster to go for another bumpy ride that goes round in a circle and ends up where you started? Where did you get that from? What? That roller coaster jazz. You've been reading them upmarket women's magazines again, haven't you? It doesn't suit you, maybe, it's all this weary of the sex war style. Oh, oh me. Just pay me a couple for thank you. Who <laughs> was uh, old friend of yours in the Rovers last night? Mr. Uh, Wilton, is he called? Oh, yes. Mm. Oh, he was in, was he, Hilda? How long was he there? Oh, about an hour or so. Still there when I went home. I, uh, I said, how'd you do, you know, out of politeness, like. He um, seemed to be waiting for somebody, I thought. I wondered if it might be you. £1.94, Elder. Oh. I'm surprised you didn't ask. Not like you to be shy. Oh, no. No, it's none of my business who he was waiting for. No, I just thought he looked uh, lost like. Oh, well, time I was at my work. Ta ta. Bye. He was there, you see, waiting for you. Now, doesn't that give you a pang? It does me. See, other people spot it. That little boy lost, Luke. As far as I'm concerned, it can get lost and stay lost. Morning, Mr. Sugden. What can I get you? We well, tampered with it night at all. Pardon? You better have a check round me. Our burglars in the area. What's this, Percy? Just said we were the burglars on the prowl last night. Did you ever go at you? Well, there's no sign of any funny business here. Ah, no, I didn't think so. I, I did you a favour, Councillor. I, I frightened him off. Uh, how many of them were there then? Well, I couldn't be precise as to how many there were in the gang, uh, Councillor. I mean, in the middle of a rough and tumble, you don't have a lot of time for counting. You have told the police, I suppose. Well, now you've touched on a sore point. Uh, Mrs Turpin seems to think it'll get any walk in trouble if we bring the police in. Trouble with who? The brewery. Uh, not being on the spot, so to speak. And also no male employee on the premises. Man, I told her there's a man in the house, yours truly. You know, and uh, nobody can argue with that, but you won't be told. Yeah, well, I don't suppose it matters all that much. As long as you weren't hurt, Percy. Oh, no, like I say, I can handle myself a bit, you know. Oh, yes. But if I were you, Councillor, I'd make sure you were well locked up at nights. No disrespect to yourself, but it's not everybody as handy with the mitts as I am. <laughs> You're not telling the police, and you're a policeman's widow. Yeah, well, it does go against the grain, but... Uh... I mean, what would the brewery say if they knew that she was still at their Jonies? Billy was with her, a prep was on his holidays. Oh, come on now, Betty. You've got yourself to think about as well as Annie Walker. Mm. You could have been knocked about or anything. It's a good job Percy Sugden were here. <laughs> How do you mean? Well, I don't know who more frightened him or me. You take Percy Sugden to speak, you'd think he'd tackle the tiger with his bare arms. Well, he did have a go, didn't he? Well, he made plenty of noise. Give whoever it was plenty of time to get out. Can't say I blame him. Mm. And I still think you should tell the police. Well, you see, I've been thinking. Now, I don't think anybody did break in. I think that somebody had in the gents' toilets just before closing time. You know, more for a prank. Because the only thing they pinched for a pint of ale. Could be. Mm. Did you not get a glimpse of him at all? No, through that front door long before Percy got himself worked up to go in and having a peep in the bar. Oh. <laughs> Wonder it was. I don't know. Hiya, darling. Give us a packet of fags full before cough gets better, will you? Yeah. Uh, a bit of excitement round here last night. Did you hear anything of them? Who? Oh, this gang Percy subbed in tackle. They burst into the Rovers. The gang and Percy tackled them, eh? My heck, I'd like to have seen that. Oh, Percy's well pleased with himself. He reckons he deserves a medal. Oh, he does, though. Deserves a Nobel Prize for literature. <laughs> Hello. Hello, mate. Is Alf in? Yeah, he's in the back. Alf! Yes, love. Hello, Rita. Hello, love. Oh, is that the Gazette you've got there? Yes, I thought you'd want to see it. I don't think I want to. I think I ought to, though. I didn't get much sleep last night worrying about it. Well, there's not a lot in. Just a few lines about last week's committee meeting. There you are, see? Precinct yeah. plan turned down. Yeah. 
Oh, Deirdre will make a brew, will you? Yeah, sure. Oh, well, that's a relief. <laughs> that's the understatement of the year and all. I'm not kidding you. Some of the questions that reporter asked, you know, there was something in his attitude that made me dead uneasy. Oh, I know what you mean. He phoned me last night. He rang you? Mm. What about? Well, that's what I asked him. About opposition to the precinct scheme, he said. He wondered whether Councillor Roberts was talking for local traders in general, or me in particular. You see what he's getting at. What do you tell him? Well, I said, in my opinion, you spoke for yourself. But as a councillor, you spoke for everybody in the district. Well, then he went on to ask where we were on friendly terms, and I had to admit we were. Ah, yes, it all adds up, you see. That's how it was with me, you know. He obviously thinks I'm doing something, you know, though. Feathering my own nest or doing something for my friend, something like that. They're just trying to dig up some scandal, that's all. Anyway, they've not managed it, so that's a relief. Right, just ruined. All right, there's nothing in this week's paper. What about next week's? Oh, don't say that, love. Good grief. Who is it that's doing this, anyway? Oh, who's trying to dig up dirt for me? That's what I want to know. Morning. Morning. Sorry I'm late. Shall I make you a coffee? I've just had a cup. Oh, is this today's Gazette? Looking for anything in particular? Um, no, not especially. Let me guess. You're looking for a story about dirty work at the crossroads over the precinct scheme with Councillor Alf Roberts as the villain in chief. Well, yes, I was. The story you wrote that I decided we couldn't print. Yes, all right. I was looking for that, yes. Alf told me last night he'd had a reporter from the Gazette onto him asking questions that were very clear in their implications. I knew straight away that you'd tip them off. How could you do it, Sally? How could I do it? That story ought to be printed in the public interest. Your friend, Councillor Roberts, has been pulling strings for his own private interests or his lady friends. You know... That. Look, Sally, I'm trying very hard to be dispassionate about this because one of us has to be. Now, your interpretation is a possibility, I admit that, but it's only a possibility. We can't be sure. The one thing we can be sure about is the information came to me through Deirdre. It was privileged information, and we are not entitled to use it. Well, you may think you're not... I busy. know that! It's the one cast iron certainty in this affair. And the fact that we have a duty to our public does not entitle us to throw our own ethics out of the window. Nor does it entitle you to pass on information I give you in confidence to another newspaper. Well, I'd just like to know why the Gazette haven't used the story. They were dead keen. Unless, of course, someone's been leaning oh, on Oh, grow up! Just consider the possibility that the Gazette didn't use it because it's a plain case of libel. But I still say it should be printed. Look, maybe the Gazette can afford great libel damages. I really don't know, but I can't. A libel action would close this place up. Bang goes the paper, and my job along with it. Well, I might be prepared to risk that for the right issue if we were in the right and if our hands were clean. This isn't the issue. And one more thing. Anything I tell you in confidence stays in confidence in the future. If, that is, you have a future with this paper. What does that mean? It means that I'm considering whether or not to give you the sack. Well, I always rather liked Derek. And I always thought you did. Well, yes, I did. It's quite true. But then he just took advantage. I always understood you were a bit slow in that department. Oh, that's not the only way a man can take advantage of a woman, Rita. Well, perhaps it's all for the best. And after all, it's true what they say. There's plenty more fish in the sea. Yes, but before you throw a tiddler back like Derek, you have to be very confident your bait's still working, don't you? Oh, Rita. Miss Riley. Yes? Sign here, please. What? Are these for me? Miss Riley, cabin, Rosamond Street. Oh. Thanks very much. Thank you. Oh, they're lovely, Mavis. Oh. Hey, they're from Derry. Did you hear that, Mavis? They're from Derry. Well, he's certainly trying hard, Mavis. You have to admit that. He's wooing you. He's laying siege to your affection. That's what he's doing. Listen to this. I hope these flowers speak for me. Please have dinner with me tonight. 
I'll call for you at seven. Please, please, please say yes. Yeah, but as you said yourself, I think Gazette haven't done a story, so let that be the end of it. Yeah, not yet, then. What if they do? It could be a right nasty smear job. Yeah, well, let me just say this, Alf. Maybe they decided to spike the story they were going to do for the same reason that I would have spiked yeah, it. But you're a mate, aren't you? You wouldn't do such a story. Uh, yeah, but the point I'm trying to make, Alf, is that it's obviously libelous, isn't it? So you need to have a worry about seeing it in print. Uh, maybe you're right. I did think of ringing that editor up and giving him a piece of my mind. Uh, oh, no, no, no. I wouldn't do that, Alf. No, editors are a mulish lot. You push him, he might just publish and be damned. Uh. I don't suppose you could have a word in, could you? Me? Well, you're all in the same game, aren't you? I mean, you could put him straight. You could maybe find out who's feeding him this rubbish. Oh, no, I hardly know the chap else. I've got no strings to pull, you know. And even if I did, uh, that's not a very good idea. No, like I say, just forget it. Do you think that's a good idea? A very good idea. That's better. Now then, you look very nice. Very nice. Do you think this dress is all right, Tony? I mean, I've, I've no idea where he's taking me for a meal. I'd... I just thought this would go practically anywhere. Honestly, Mavis, you look great. Oh, thank you. I mean, it's ludicrous, really, isn't it? Why am I going to all this trouble for Derek? Why am I even bothering to see him again? Well, don't you know? Well, after the way he behaved last time. I mean, when I think of it, I get furious with him all over again. Why, Rita? Why am I going to bother to speak to him? Because you're going to bide your time until you're both nicely settled over dinner. Mm. Then you're going to pour mint sauce over his head. What? Well, don't keep asking me these dramatic questions. I'm going out of sheer curiosity, you know, more than anything else. I mean, there's no way I could feel anything for him again. Dead, is it, the feeling? Well, if it was, it was him that killed it, not me. I mean, he was totally insensitive to my feelings. And you just had to say one word out of place to him and it was hurt. Right. Well, I suppose that answers the question why you're going. Obviously, just your type. Look, we've got half an hour before he's due. Why don't we have a nice cup of tea? Oh, have a good mind to go upstairs and take this dress off. No! Let him give you a good dinner first, then give him that sort of encouragement. Right, Mr. Marks, leave it with me. I'll change the date on the original advert and then run it for another four weeks. Thanks again. All right, then. I'll say good night, then. Good night, Sally. Uh, have you... Well, what I mean is, uh... Have I made up my mind whether or not to fire you? Yeah. I have. Made up my mind, that is. You're not fired. Oh, good. Not this time, but if there's another time, you are. Yeah, I see. I hope you do, Sally. You do good work, you're an asset to the paper, and God knows I don't want to kill your enthusiasm for a good story. But when I say no, I mean no. You've got to accept that. Like it says in the small print in the rules of the competition, the editor's decision is final. Okay? Signor Wilton, buona Signora. Would you like an aperitivo? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Hey. Ah, now, what would you like to drink, Mavis? Uh, I'd just like a small sherry, please. Uh, uh, gin and tonic, please, and uh, dry sherry. Oh, look, could I have a medium sherry, please? Oh, oh yeah. Echo. Well, there seems no way here, I see. Well, they should do. I must be one of their best customers. I'm always bringing clients here. Well, it must be very nice to have a job like that. Well, yes, it is. I can't deny it. But it's work as well as pleasure, you know, Mavis. And when you're an executive, there's a lot of pressure on you. My lifestyle's been changing totally these past few years. Totally. You've got the um, automatic gears on your car, I see. Oh, yes, yes. Goes with the job, of course, the car. 
Oh. They give me a new one every two years. Oh, and do you like the automatic, then? Oh, yes, it's all right. I was just wondering, because, um, well, I've, I've learned to drive a car, actually. Oh, have you? Mm -hmm. Yes, so my lifestyle's changed in many ways, too. I passed my test first time, as much as fact. Oh, oh signore. Oh, thank you. Signore? Thank you, Leonardo. Thank you. Well, I still think you should have fired her. Yeah, well, if you want to know in a nutshell why I didn't, it's this. She was doing what she thought was right. At her age, I'd have probably done the same thing. But I couldn't sack her, love. Not with jobs as hard to come by as they are. Oh, well, I hope you remember that when Al fires me, because he will, you know, when he finds out where the Gazette got his information from. Yeah, but I don't think he will, and he obviously doesn't suspect you. No, because he trusts me, and that makes it worse somehow. Honestly, Ken, I feel awful about it. Yeah, I know, I understand. Do you? I mean, I know I go on about Alf sometimes, but he's a good boss to work for, and he's been very decent to me one way and another. Honestly, I feel terrible about having made trouble for yeah, him. Yeah, no, I do understand. I mean, I have a dilemma too, you know. I like Alf. I like him a lot. But all the same, if he misuses his powers as a counsellor, I've got to feel free to criticise that. I mean, it makes life very complicated. Well, it doesn't to me. You don't just hit somebody with something they've told you in confidence as a friend. I agree. That's why I wouldn't use the story. Yeah, Sally Waterman don't see it like that, though, does she? Oh, yeah, but in fairness to her, she's not Al's friend, is she? Actually, I'm not very interested in being fair to her, if you must know. And I'm not too happy about you telling her things I tell you either. I mean, do you tell her everything we talk about? No, of course well, I, I don't. I hope you don't. Excuse me, Mavis. I just want to nip out to the car. Oh. Uh, Derek? Yes? Well, you are coming back, aren't you? Coming back? What do you mean? Uh, well, I don't know, really. I, well, I just had this sudden vision of, of me sitting here alone and you not coming back. And that way to just sit on the table and frowning. And, I mean, I haven't got much money with... Mavis, of course I'm coming back. I'll only be a moment. Will I come back? <laughs> Honestly. I don't know where you get such a strange idea about me. Now, without fun, Mrs. Walker let him know that their bill is not coming in tonight again. You're kidding. No? And would Muggins here be an angel and stay on the premises again? I hope you gave her a short, sharp comment. Well, I couldn't, could I? I mean, it's bad enough face to face, but when she starts having the flaming vapours over the phone... If you want my considered opinion... No, thank you. You're out of order, Betty, not uh, reporting last night's break-in to the police. I mm. said that. It's what they call in and abetting or compounding a felony. Mm. I mean, I reckon Kenny should put a report in his paper. Well, what had you in mind, Percy? Oh, I mean, you're the expert, I'll leave it to you. Mind if it was me, I'd put uh, something like uh, War Hero Foils Pub Bandits. War Hero? You were in a flaming kook house. The lads who were eating your cooking, they were the heroes. Listen, I'd make gravy under shellfire, mate. There's not many can say that. I've done my bit up at the sharp end. I still say last night's do it should go in the paper. Hang on a minute. Betty might not want it putting in the paper. It's not up to Betty what goes in the paper. It is if it's about me. Give over, tell it, Ken. What's news and what isn't? Not easy to define that, Percy, but if Betty hasn't reported it to the police, who am I to report it to my readers? There you are, you see, Betty, we're back to that. It's a citizen's duty to report a crime. Now, I've never hesitated, I can tell you. Look, I still don't think it is a crime. The more I think of it, the more I am sure it was one of them lads that were playing darts last night, locked himself in the jet's toilet just before closing, you know, just for a prank. Rubbish. Hardened criminals they were, they weren't lads. What about a great big scar down his face? The other was a huge bloke. Oh, either. I can't take no more of this. Put a button on it, will you, Percy? Betty, look. What? I owe you for a pint of bitter. Do you love when for? Last night, after time. Finally found up Bartok, down to me. So it were you, Duckworth. We might have known. I cannot tell a lie. I am the phantom beer supper. <laughs> now, that's as good as a confession in a court of law. Now, you've all heard that. You're all witnesses like me. You? You're a useless witness. You, you swore blind it were a gang. Cause it's all now, that's all. All this here old lack a lot of codology. It's no good you waffling. You've admitted breaking and entering. Give over. Well, I bet you said I hid it, gents. So it weren't breaking and entering. Breaking and exiting, yes. 
<laughs> well, that settles it, Mr. Sugden. No story. <laughs> Betty. But we're still pals. <laughs> oh, go on, then, but don't do it again. Had I told you before about wanting to see how far Percy had pushed this hero lark. Don't kid yourself, mate. I knew it was you all along. I saw you. Oh, yes. I thought, now, what'd be a clever way of making this fellow own up? Needle him, I thought. Exasperate him. He won't be able to contain himself. <laughs> Worked like a charm. I am. Whoever it were who invented lying, it must have come from round here. <laughs> oh. More coffee, Signora? Oh, yes, please. You? Pardon? Here I am, you see. I just wanted to go out to the car to get this. It's something for you. What is it? You better open it and find out. Oh. Do you recognise it, Mavis? Oh, it looks like that canteen of cookery you won for being best salesman that time. Yes, it is. The one you helped me to win, Mavis, if you remember. Oh, yes, I remember. You gave it to me and then you took it back and gave it to your mother. Yes. And I know you understood why that was. All the same, I'm sure you must have been a little disappointed. Well, yes, but, I mean, I don't see why we should rehash all that, Derek. I mean, it hardly matters now. It matters to me, Mavis. Very much. And I want you to know that I'm sorry. I, I want you to have it. Well, I always did. I have a lot to make up to you, Mavis. You really have changed, Derek, haven't you? Oh, yes. I and for the better. I'm going to prove that to you. He's gonna go cold. Hello. What all day? Well, I don't see why not. Hang on a minute. Hey, listen, there's no reason why I can't work at the cafe today, is there? No. Well, what about Babby Gale? Oh, we could go to play group. You'd rather be there anyway. Hey, would you? Would you rather go with other kids and start with your mammy? Yeah, all right, Dory. I'll be there as quick as I can. I'll see you then. Bye. It's my day of leisure gone for a Burton. Yes, I'd better get my case. I don't know. You weren't coming home for your dinner, were you? No, oh, probably not, no. We'll make it definitely not, eh? Yeah, OK. I was told you were late on tonight, didn't I? Yeah, game of squash. Hey, Gail, uh, who's this Dorian that we're ringing you? Just a mate of Alma's, looking after the cafe while Alma's in America. Ooh, mm, all right for some, isn't it? Right, I'm off, Bobby. Ta-da. ta, -da. ta, -da, ta -da. Hello. Bye, Ivy. Bye. What time? What time? I didn't tell her Alma what was in America with a fancy man. Home? Not that she's too keen on her anyway. That'd really put the lid on it. Yeah. Anyway, you'll give us both a lift to nursery, won't you? Me? Yeah. Only Alma did seem run off, rushed off her feet. I've got to open up the garage, you know. Oh, yeah. Big rush all of a sudden, is it? Well, how long are you going to be? Two minutes. Quicker if you give me a hand. What do you want to do? Do you want to put Izzy's shoes on and clean his teeth or clear the table? Um, I'll clear the table. <laughs> I thought you'd say that, though. Come on, eh? Let's get you cleaned up. Don't want to keep your daddy waiting, do we? Come on. Come on. Morning. Hello, darling. Morning. Morning. Well, it wasn't a complete disaster then. What, last night? Oh, it was lovely, Rita. It was, it was absolutely lovely. It was the sort of evening. Well, it was just everything you could wish for when you go out for a meal. Food. <laughs> Well, I mean, the food was marvellous. It was a very nice restaurant. Who paid? Oh, Rita. Derek was the perfect gentleman from start to finish. You've no idea how much he's changed. It, it was so confident. Yeah? Not bossy. No. No, more sort of... Um, Masterly. Mm. Decisive? Yes. He has changed. Oh, he has. He really has. And he brought me a present. Oh. Canteen of cutlery. A what? I know that sounds a bit strange. No, no, I mean, if you're dining out, it's as well to be prepared. Well, not to you. It's not last night. No. No, you, you remember that canteen of cutlery that he won for being top sales? That you helped him win, you mean? Well, yes, I suppose I did. Which he then went and gave to his mother? Yes, well, that one, well, he, he said he felt I should have had it all along, so he gave it me. That don't mean we'll have her around here wanting it back, does it? Oh, his mother's dead, Rita. I think that'll stop her. Well, I, I think that's what's brought about the change in him, because 
I think he was somewhat dominated by her when she was alive, but now I think he's sort of found his feet. And used them to come toddling back to you again. He said I'd never been far from his thoughts. Well, I'm glad. And I'm glad you had a nice night out. I think he owes you one or two. I've asked him round here tonight. Oh, you don't let the grass grow under your feet, do you? Well, I thought it would be a chance to use the cutlery. <laughs> Are they gorgeous? Oh. Great. Oh, 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 right. You don't tell folk there's a brew going, do we? have left you one in the pot. Come on. Sorry, what are these? Oh, I don't want to lose. What, what, what? Don't I knees them? I came second in a knobbly knees contest. Oh, well, <laughs> God help whoever comes first. Oh, oh, where God. are these your pictures from the holiday camp? Oh. Let's have a look. <laughs> this is one of him molesting a helpless female. Oh. Oh. We're having a drink. We're just having a drink. Who's this old woman with her? I would give him some mother. She, were, she went with the mother. She was having a night out. Oh. Oh. No, you've got it wrong. It was the mother he was molesting. Oh, <laughs> give over, will you? <laughs> hey, hey. What are you doing there? Oh, oh, see, hey, hey. oh he's trying to stop her running away. <laughs> aren't you? Yeah. I were doing the, I doing the conga. Have you not seen anybody do the flipping conga not before? Not like that. Oh, give us it, yeah. I'll not show you. I'll show Is you. Is that a time. promise? Oh, oh, but you had a good time, though, did you, Fred? Oh yeah, of course. Did you not see how tired that old woman looked? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right then. <laughs> oh, I'll bet there's all sorts goes on in them holiday camps, isn't there? Oh, Wouldn't yeah. do for me. Yeah. There's all sorts been going off here, and all we had uh, Percy Sugden stood guard one night. Well. Supposed to, yeah. Well, never mind, Betty. Yeah. Freddy boy's back. The old firm. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, what about Billy then? You think he's gone for good, do you? Well, uh, how long's he been left? Oh, a couple of days. It's longer than you need to ask your mum if you can uh, borrow 6,000 quid. Well, then. Well, I shan't be shedding no tears if he's scarfed. No, me neither. Well, I say good riddance. Mm. We're all right together, aren't we? Well, mm. I mean, we always have been. Here, here. Welcome back, Noble Knees. All is forgiven. <laughs> <laughs> Four bacon sandwiches to take out. Yeah. Cup of tea, Doreen. Oh, yes, please, love. Ta. Oh, now, bacon. Are them the same as sausage or are they different? Well, they're 45 each, so that's 180. If you say so, love. Let's just write that, love. Smashing. You can come again, you can. <laughs> Bye, Kelly. Bye bye. Mm. If you'd have said you couldn't come in today, I'd have screamed. Yeah, I didn't know Mrs. Bolton were leaving. Me neither, love. Not till she were on her way out yesterday. I mean, apparently she'd told Alma, but had Alma told me? She'd have forgotten. All the things on her mind. Yeah, and we all know what his name is, don't we? <laughs> when did he get back? Ah, well, funny you should ask. She rang me last night. From America? From America. To say her boyfriend's business is doing that well, they're stopping another few weeks. Or happen another few months, or happen from here to eternity. She just can't say. Oh, well. So. Who's gonna run this place? Yeah. You are, love. Bye, love. Thanks. I am? Well, let's put it this way I'm certainly not, as I made plain to Alma. Two weeks I said I'd do, and them two weeks are up. Yeah, but I mean, I'm only part time. I can't manage by myself. Oh, not by yourself. No, but for you to be in charge, like. Chief Coop and Bottle Washer. Is this Alma's idea? Yeah. I mean, between you and me, I don't think we'll ever see her back here. Not unless she gets fed up with him or he gets fed up with her. But in the meantime, I'm fed up with this. So, just say the word and it's all yours. There we go, girls. 62p to you. It's Freddy. Oh, but he was saying he'd just been on your holidays. Yeah, enjoyed them and all. Can't whack it. Foot loose and fancy free, eh? <laughs> Please, Fred. Oh, hello. Fancy game of darts, kid? Yeah. yeah, go on then. There's some others with flights on them this time. I know. It's not a question of flights, with or without. It's who's throwing them that's the thing, okay? Of course, you've been a married fella, you'll have forgot what it's like being a free agent, having your own chalet. I'll need another week to get over the first one. <laughs> Yes, ladies. Um, uh, two sweet sherries, please. And have you any sandwiches? Well, not on me, love, no, but we could have if I made some. What kind would you like? I'd just like to have two of them. Well, I'm looking at these. You're looking at these. Hey, I was hoping I'd see you. Well, let me get you a drink. No, 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 best not, but uh, I want to talk to you and you can't wait. Yeah? Alma's decided to stay on in America. She wants me to take over. What, you mean full term, like? Well, it'd have to be, yeah, but I'd be running it. I'd be in charge of everything. Well, yeah, but, um, I mean... Look, if we can manage without it... I think we'll... I'd like to do it, Brian, and I'm not likely to get another chance. I know there's Nicky, but... Yeah. Well, we could afford for him to go to playgroup full-time with me working. And if we'll be with him going to proper school within a year... I know, look, but... Um... But what? Well, we'd be running off his feet, wouldn't we? I mean, taking him backwards and forwards and all that. Oh. Well, it's all right for you, love, yeah. Great for you. But not for you. The garage comes first, right? 
I see. Well, it does. It has to. Of course it does. I should have known better than to ask. Oh, no, I, I'm very glad that you and Derek are obviously getting on so well. What do you think? I'm being a bit silly. Oh, no, I don't. Well, it sounds like it to me. It does, honestly. It's just that... Oh, I don't know. It, just that I allowed myself to be rushed off my feet once. And I ended up marrying a man I didn't really know at all. Well, it's not my first encounter with a man, you know, Ed. Oh, no. no. Even if I had never been married. Have you told Derek about Victor? No, not yet. It's just not come up. But you see, there I wasn't rushed off my feet, was I? I mean, Victor asked me to go and, to go and live with him, and I, I thought about it, and I said no. Eventually. You sure you won't have another round? Uh, no, thanks, mate. There you go, Squire. Cheers, Cop. You're the gaffer again now, then, are you? Well, looking very much like it, innit? Mind you, anybody that knew that Billy Walker could have marked your card for you. Here today and gone tomorrow, that's his style. Have you seen what's got into the living room? What? Just got in through the back door. What's to do with you now, Lynch? Go and have a look only. God save you. Can. But what is it, Betty? A dog or something? But whatever it is, you can go first, eh? Fred. Come on. Go on. Flaming, Dora. Oh. It's nice to see you again, I know. <laughs> So, he just said no then, did your husband, just like that? More or less. Just doesn't want his precious routine disturbing, that's what it comes down to. Oh, well, they do like routine to fellas, don't they? Mind you, they generally like money more. Didn't get a chance to talk about that. Well, I'd bet. I mean, judging by the mood you were in last night, I bet Alma would give you out you asked for. I mean, she hasn't got much choice, has she? Makes two of us. She's phoning me again tonight. So I'll negotiate on your behalf, if you like. Tell her you want more money, eh? You can negotiate with me husband, if you like. Oh, I'll not do that. I have enough trouble with my own. But what happens if he won't change his mind and I still have to say no? I mean, what'll after the cafe then? Could be Robert Carrier will be interested. Failing him, nobody. You mean it'll close? Yeah, why not? Lots of other places do. I don't work at them, do I? Morehead Street? Well, I've been up and down. I can't find it. I think you go to the end of here, and it's one of them little terraces near Canal. Oh, Emily, you'll know. Where's Moran Street? Oh, uh, you go down here, past what used to be the Empire Cinema. Ah, it's a furniture warehouse now. That's right. Then you turn into Duke Street and it's off there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you've come to some henpens, you've gone too far. I probably have anyway, as soon as it's a bathroom they won't put oh. it in. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, uh, thanks again. Anytime. Bye. 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 It's Mavis in. Going to be a little palace judging for work she's putting in up there. I said I'd lend her this. She's doing a steak and kidney pie and didn't have anything the right size. Home cooking? Well, I suggested it, actually. I didn't think there was any point in her trying to outdo this posh restaurant he seems to have taken her to. Good thinking, Batman. Mm. I'll give her a shout. Thank you. Hang on. Is that the patter of dainty feet I hear, or have we got rats? Oh, hello, oh, Emily. Hello. I thought I heard you. Well, this is it. Oh, that's perfect. Thanks ever so much. Is there anything else I can do? No, I think it's all more or less done. I feel guilty, though, because I'm supposed to be working. You probably work in a damn sight harder up there than you would down here. <laughs> And if I carry on, then go on. <laughs> I will. Thanks again. I hope it all goes all right. Tell you what, if he lets her down this time, we'll form a posse. String him up from nearest traffic light. Well, I'm not normally in favour of lynching, but I think in this case. I don't know, it sounds a right carry on. She decides to stop in America and never mind what happens to her business. Like I say, she wants me to take over. Oh, yeah, well, it's easy for her to say that, isn't it? Easy for Brian to say no and all. Look, he'll only be thinking of you, Gail. Extra work there'll be. I mean, odd day here and there's not bad luck, but you have too much on your plate to go full time. I'd like full time. Hmm. Well, I'd better keep your mouth shut then, hadn't I? You see, Dory's determined she's not stopping on. So if I don't do it, place will have to close. I'll end up with out, let alone me part-time. Well, there's always garage, love. I mean, you've always given hand out there, haven't you? Oh, I'm more ornament than use there. Look, Gail, we can't all have everything we want, love. Some of us can. Men, mostly. Shh. You know, when I was first married, it were almost unheard of for women with children to go out to work. Well, it were frowned on, anyway. Sometimes I think we were happier, no. 
Life were a lot less hectic and you've got a lot more time for your family, love. Well, I try to be. Oh, locking us in, I see. Yes, well, we, we don't want to be interrupted, do we? I, I mean, by anybody thinking that the shop's still open. No, I've brought you some wine. It's a rosé. Oh. I know you said you like rosé. Oh, I do. Thank you. But, I mean, two nights on the run. I'm getting a taste for oh, it. Why not? Mmm, <laughs> that's a lovely fragrance. It's steak and kidney pie. No, I mean your perfume. Oh, thank you. Well, would you like to go up? Oh. Oh, no, after you. Oh, thank you. Just the kidney pie. Oh, is it? That's my favourite. I thought you meant that. You know when you said it. Have told you yet? Not yet, Betty. I didn't think Hilda would be all that interested. What? Tell me what? That my tails have gone up a penny. Oh, is that all? Oh, and Billy's back. Billy Walker? Yeah. Just walked in this dinner time like he'd never been gone. Made mm. me quite a turn, I can tell you. Yeah. Oh, what's he up to then? I mean, is he stopping or has he just come to collect his stuff or what? Search me. It's hardly said a word. He's been out most of the day. He's never shown his face in here. Do you know, I had a feeling we hadn't seen the last of him. It wasn't the way you were talking this morning. Ah, no, well, one thing I've learned. You don't always make folk happier by telling them stuff they don't want to know. You got the manners again, Fred? Yeah, that's the honour at stake. Got we even a series. I haven't got them. You must have them. You never give me back this dinner time. Me? Hey, of course we did. Give them you. Well, I'm saying you didn't. Are you making me out a liar or something? No, we're just saying. Well, what is this? A flipping youth club? What we're saying is we gave you them darts back. All right, go and prove it. Go on, can you prove it? What, you want some darts? Only I thought we might be having a game, so I brought these. Oh, great. Well done, Shirley, lad. Uh, forget what I was saying, Fred, mate. We don't need your grotty old arrows. I suppose you'll think you've done something clever, do you? Hey, what? I'll tell you what, Curly, you get them in while we make a start. Seeing as well, we were here first, you know. Oh, yeah. Play the winner. Seeing it's going to be me. <laughs> Three pints of visit, please, Fred. Yeah. Oh, good When you Lord. finish tonight, Fred, this applies to you and all. What does? Shush and listen. When you close up tonight, don't go rushing off, I want a word, all right? So come through the back. Oh, will you want me in all, Mr Walker? I mean, seeing as I happen to be on the premises in the capacity of a customer. No. Oh. Suit yourself. Well, I want you to. All right. <laughs> well. Who does he think he is? Uh, I mean, I mean, just who does he think he flipping is, eh? That, that's what he's going to tell us. <laughs> well, we've both got busy days tomorrow. Yes, well, I'm sure yours is much busier than mine. There's something else about tomorrow, too. Oh? It's my birthday. Oh, no, you should have said I could have made you cake or something. Well, I was rather hoping you'd do more than that. I was hoping you'd come to my house and help celebrate it with me. I'd like you to see my home, Mavis. I'd very much like you to see it. But I'd very much like to see it, Derek. So you will. I can come pick you up tomorrow evening, can I? Yes. Oh. oh. Thank you. And thank you for a lovely evening. Oh, it was nothing. Well, I don't mean it wasn't lovely. Well, it was a pleasure. Yes, it was. It was a great pleasure. Don't let me out then. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, no, you have to be careful when you live on your own. Oh. oh. You need protecting, Mavis. A burglar alarm. That's what you need. Yes, I suppose so. Till tomorrow then. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Good night, Mavis. Good night, Derek. No trying to sneak out. I would if I'd got somewhere to go. Oh, come on. He might have something nice to say to us. You don't know. What? That he might be leaving again, going for good this time. Could be. I'd pay his bus fare if I thought it would help. I'm sorry to keep you all like this. It won't be for long. Oh, we don't mind. Do we, Fred? No. no. I'll sit down, for goodness sake. You make me feel like headmaster. <laughs> I've never felt an headmaster. Have you, Betty? No, but said just. Sure. Can't help it. <laughs> As you all know, I've been to see my mother. 
Oh, how is she, lovey? Oh, she's not getting any younger. Oh. But she's determined to have a say in everything, as no doubt you can all possibly imagine. <laughs> oh, uh, she sends her regards. Asked about you all. Nice. She's very concerned about the pub. Well, it has been her life, so I suppose it's only natural. In fact, she managed to talk me into something I didn't think I'd ever do. This afternoon, I went down to see the licensing magistrate. I've taken out a protection order on the pub, which transfers the pub into my name until the transfer session is proper. And then it will be made definite. What do you mean? Yes. She's bowing out. From now on, it'll be my name on the license and my name over the door. Oh, I thought you'd have been in bed. So did I. I'd have been back soon. I'd have only had a drink and got chatting. Well, go on then. Ask me how I went on. How did you go on? I won. Our game still won. It's a bummy on ladder and all. Great. Uh, do you want a coffee? I'm going to make myself one. I'm too tired. Well, you shouldn't have waited up, should you? I waited up, Brian. To tell you, I still want to take that job. Well, I don't want you to take it. I gathered that. And why bring it up again, then? Well, it's a row about it, or what? I want you to tell me why. Why? Why are you so against it? Well, there's... There's Nicky. There's everything. Who's going to look after this house if we're all out working? We'll run it between us. Or if you like, you leave the garage and you stop at home all day. Oh, for crying out well... loud. You want me to leave the garage so you can work in a calf? No. Oh, a joke, were it? No, it weren't. I just want you to realise what it's like for me for once. I want a job, Brian. I want one with responsibility. I'm very lucky this one came along, and all you can say is no. Well, for one thing... Oh. You want a reason? Yes. For one thing, I don't want to see you like this every night. Like what? Fagged out. Too tight to think straight. I'm only tired because I've been waiting for you to come home from your precious squash. Oh, that as well now, is it? I want that job, Brian. Then take it. I can't stop you. Yes, you can. I need your support, Brian. I can't fight against you all the time. Good night. Have you sorted it out, then? Oh, yeah. And you're both arguing in bed till going one o'clock. Not arguing, Ivy. Discussing. Well, are you going back full time at cafe? Ask him. Ask me what? What the position is about the cafe. You're taking it, aren't you? There's no orange juice. There's a new carton in the fridge. Has he changed his mind or are you going whether he likes it or not? Oh, no, he agrees. Mind you, I'd have taken the job whether he liked it or not. So he decided to look on the bright side. What bright side? It's not going to be easy, you know, working full-time like that kiddie to look after Gail. Brian manages it, don't you? Anyway, the deciding factor was the extra money. Uh-huh, yes. Oh. So that was the bright side, was it? Exactly. So now everybody's happy. Well, we'll see if we're all as happy a month from now. I just wanted to ring you and wish you a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Derek. Did you get a lot of cards? Six? Oh, my, you must be popular. Oh, okay. I'll give you mine tonight when I see you. Thanks. I hope you find it amusing. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I think we do have a similar sense of humour, don't we? Oh, yes, I'm fine. And you? No after effects from the meal I gave you, I hope. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I wanted to ask you, um, Derek. W would you like a gold chain? Uh, no, a, a gold chain to put round your neck. You know, for your birthday. Oh, yeah. You would? Thank oh, you. Oh, God. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, all right. Right, I'll see you tonight then. Bye-bye. Gold chain? What's wrong with that? Can you see Derek with a gold chain round his neck? Yes, I can. Not got much of a neck, has he? Isn't his head sort of clamped straight onto his shoulders like a snowman? No, it isn't. Anyway, he's not macho enough for a gold chain. You've got to be very athletic with a hairy chest to suit a gold chain. Otherwise, you look a right, Jessie. Well, for your information, Derek does have a hairy chest. Has he now? Yes, he and has. you'd know? Yes, I do. How? 
Mind your own business. I see. So we did more than stand and admire the view when we were hosteling together in the Lake District. But of course. What do you think I should wear tonight? Something frothy, do you think? Have you got something frothy? No, but I can get something. Mavis, you're running to trip up. What do you mean? Well, all these dates and flowers and gifts and presents. It's more like spring in Park Lane than the life and times of Mavis Riley and Derek Wilton. You haven't noticed him popping little purple pills in his gob, have you? I keep telling you, it's a Derek's changed. Uh, how old is he today? 48. Oh, too old for change, Mavis. I mean, once he'd turned 40, I couldn't stop Len talking to self, Aunt Lavie, for loving the money. Well, we'll just have to wait and see, won't we? I mean, what else can we do? Billy Walker's going to be running the pub permanently. Got it in one, Hilda. Buy it your quick this morning. Well, what about Mrs Walker? Mrs Walker's handed over to her little lad, isn't she? Like we always knew she would, sometime or other. Oh, well, it could be worse, I suppose. <laughs> At least it's been kept in the family. I mean, better the devil you know. Ah, yes, Hilda. We might know Billy Walker, the prodigal son, here today and gone tomorrow. But do we know Billy Walker, your actual grand visor? Well, he has been in charge off and on. Not completely in charge, Hilda. There's always been his mother at the other end of that phone. Approving and disapproving. But not anymore. Not when his name goes up over that door. What are you trying to say? So we ought to be trying to find out what he's up to. Up to? What his plans are for us, the staff. Well, you make it sound as if he's trying to do away with us or, or fire us. Which one of us can honestly say that we're a mate of Billy's? Which one of us has never crossed insults with him? Well, I haven't had that many wrong words with him. One might have been enough, Hilda. Well, what do you suggest we do? Well, I know what I'm going to do. Huh? I'm going to do just enough. Just enough, no more, no less. Then I'm fireproof. Young Billy Walker can't touch me. Go on, then. Well, I think we should have a meeting with him. Ask him what's what. What's going to happen. Workers of the Rovers Return Unite. We've got out to lose but a pittance. Right, I'm with you, Bet. Oh, go on, if you think it'll do any good. Well, I suppose it could just get his back up. 45 peacock and cheap at the price. Ta. You don't look very happy at your work this morning. I'm keeping my fingers crossed, aren't I? Does that stop you smiling at your customers now and again? Oh, I'll never smile again if she lets me down. I'm hoping I've got someone to take over from here. I'm fed up of going home smelling like a chip. But your husband doesn't come home all often as it is. Oh, thank God she's here. I hope your Brian likes chips, love. What's he on about? Never mind him. Are you taking the job? Yeah, of course I am. Can you start now? Do you like? Oh, you're smashing. Where are you? I tell you, if you hadn't come, I'd have shut this ruddy place down, I would. I told Alma I'll stand in for you for a fortnight, not a moment longer. So won't get landed, did you, with your husband? You could say that, yeah. Mm. Extra nice to him last night, were you? Be the fall for every time, don't they? Except mine, that is. When I'm nice to him, he goes and hides the wallet. <laughs> right then, I wish you luck and leave you to it. Oh, there's a woman coming in this afternoon about the washing up job. Not till this afternoon. I've just been giving everything a quick wipe with the dishcloth. They don't notice the egg stains if you fill the plates up. So it's dinner or dough, then, is it? No, it's at his place. Oh, just ignore it. <laughs> Where exactly does he live? Oh, Bramhall. Stop for. It's just in Bramhall. Yes, a footing. <sighs> He's certainly come on a pace, hasn't he, Derek? Mm. New home, new oh, car. Meteoric rise, you might say. Mm. There haven't been any great train robbies round here lately, has there? I mean, I haven't heard of any. Mind you, Mrs. Driss calls me to have broken in last week. <laughs> anyway, have a nice evening. And? And? You forgot. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. I can't say it because there isn't anything I wouldn't do. <laughs> oh, isn't she pathetic? <laughs> Bye. Bye, bye, love. Bye, bye. Oh, hello. Hello. Um, oh, pardon me. <laughs> bye. Bye. I'll have that door widened for you, Derek. Yes, indeed. Hello, Derek. I didn't expect you until this evening. No, it's just a flying visit. Um, about that gold chain, Mavis. Yes. Actually, I prefer a golfing umbrella. 
golfing umbrella. Oh. Do you play golf, Derek? Of course he plays golf. Why else would he want a golfing umbrella? Well, I thought you might have been expecting a lot of rain. Sorry. All right, Derek. I'll get your golfing umbrella. Thank you very much. So I'll pick you up about seven. You can borrow my car if you like, Mavis. Save Derek a trip. Yes, I was forgetting you can drive oh, now, Mavis. Yes. So, well, you've got the address. Straight down the A6, then. <laughs> Must rush. Forward planning meeting. Bye. Bye. My, my, what a lot you two are finding out about each other. You drive, he plays golf. Right voyage of discovery, isn't it? What's wrong with that? Nothing, actually. I don't think I'll be able to manage to come to the meeting with Billy. Not if you're having it this afternoon. Why not? Well, uh, I've heard they want somebody to wash up at Jim's cafe, so uh, I thought I'd go and see. Haven't you got enough flipping jobs already? Oh, well, it's like you said yourself this morning. The more eggs you've got in your basket, the more breakfast you're going to eat, aren't you? I didn't say that. Oh, come. <coughs> Mrs. O looking after number one, is she? Looks like it. Well, if I was you, Lynch, I'd scrub around this meeting. Keep your head down like I'm going to do. Let him do the worrying. Well, you've had a lot of practice doing that, haven't you, Freddie? Keeping your head down. Please, Especially when there's work about. <laughs> yes, love. My wife was just the same, you know. She thought that going out to work and earn a bit of brass made her independent. That's exactly what Gail says. What price independency, though? If being independent means you could stop at home all day and watch cricket on telly all day long. If she keeps getting better and better jobs, I can see myself doing that. What, keeping you at home? Right. Three cheers to hard-working, ambitious wives. I'll drink to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you got a set, Billy? <laughs> you can have my whole life, didn't you know that? <laughs> what do you want? You shouldn't say things like that to an impressionable spinster. It's cruel. No. We were wondering if we could have a little chat after the club. A chat? What about? Oh, isn't that what your plans are, if any, now you've got the whip hand? No. I mean, now you're in charge. Why not? As a matter of fact, I was going to ask you for a chat. I said, if you like a nice one. This afternoon, then. I look forward to that. I see. Just three hours, then. That's right. Eleven till two. Oh, I couldn't work on after two. Especially on Tuesday and Thursday. Tuesday and Thursday, I go dancing in the afternoon to the Senior Citizen Centre. I promise faithfully not to interrupt your dancing, Mrs Pierce. <laughs> what about holidays? By arrangement, when you want one. Oh, with pay. Oh, sorry. It's only part-time work. I thought everybody got paid for their holidays these days. Well... I'll take it. Do you provide an overall? Oh, yeah. Rubber gloves and all. Oh. Come on, I'll show you around. Is anybody serving? They'll be back in a minute. Help yourself. I won't split on you. Oh, uh, no, no, I've not come in for nothing to eat, thank you. <laughs> no, we clear the tables and they're your responsibility. Hello, Hilda. What keep you in it? This is often. Well, I think that's just about everything. I presume you'd like me to start getting on with that lot. Well, I wouldn't mind, being as I'm on my own. That's if I can presume I started at 11. You can. Uh, I'll get stuck in. Keep him well, Mrs. Ogden. Yes, thank you. Yes, Hilda. Is uh, she your new washer up then? Yeah, just this minute started, as a matter of fact. I see. You weren't interested in the job, were you, Hilda? Me? Oh, no, no, don't be daft. No, somebody what does domestic work for a consultant surgeon and a businessman doesn't have to wash up greasy pots for a living. No, uh, what I come in for was um, uh, two meat and potato pies to take out. Right. Sit yourselves down. Ta. Thank you. <coughs> Where's Fred? Isn't he coming for a little chat and all? Uh, no. No, he's gone out. Has he now? Yeah. Right. Who's going to start this little chat, then? <coughs> well, it's not so much as a chat as the answer to one or two questions. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Fire away. Well, 
You're a bit of an unknown quantity, aren't you? As the actress said to the bishop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, what we were wondering was, are things going to be the same? The same as they were under your mother? Very unhealthy, that bat. What is? Well, when a business stays the same, it withers and dies. Change is essential for growth and prosperity, Betty. Oh. What are you saying, then? That there are going to be some changes? Of course there are. I'm not the same as my mother, you know. Just hold your face most of the light for a minute. I'm sorry. What sort of changes, Billy Long? Nothing for you two to worry about. More of style. Oh. I'm not daft. <clears throat> this is a little local pub with a local clientele. It's your ideal antique little local. Uh, some of the customers here, if their missus is redecorated their houses, they wouldn't wouldn't budge an inch. But you move an ashtray out there. No, I know, mess about with it too much. They'll be down the flying horse like thoroughbreds. <laughs> yeah, but what about us? What about the staff? What about you? You will be wanting us to stop on. Of course. You're part of the fixtures and fittings, you and Betty. You're part of the atmosphere. You help to make this place what it is. An antique little local. Exactly. Yes, well, uh, I think you've... Uh, <clears throat> I think you've put us straight on one or two things that were worrying the lovely. Thank you very much. Hey, Bet. Oh, yes. I feel much better now. Much better. Good. I like to feel I've got a contented staff. Of course you have, Billy. Oh! What a lovely room! Yes, I'm rather pleased with it. It all sort of uh, gels, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. All my own ideas do. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> You're very clever. <laughs> Here, let me take that umbrella off oh, you. Thank you. Or you'll be shooting it up, and that's unlucky <laughs> indoors, isn't it? Sorry. I hope it's what you wanted. Oh, it's perfect. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Oh, uh, here's your card as well. Better late than never. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's very amusing. <laughs> yes, I thought. <laughs> and a touch naughty, too. <laughs> yes. There. Oh. Well, now, should we have a drink? Oh, yes, please. Don't tell me. Sweet sherry. Or would you prefer a fino? Fino? Dry. Oh, yes. <laughs> Why not? But just a small one, you know, when I'm driving. Yeah, and you get squiffy very quickly anyway, don't you? Yes. Oh, see, I remember. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> well, now, come and make yourself comfy. Oh, thank you. Nuts? Pardon? Would you like some peanuts? Oh, yes, please. Well, I don't know why you're bothered having a confab with Billy. It was obvious to me he wouldn't make no changes. Well, certainly not in my department, any road. Well, I mean, when you've got an expert doing the job, you've got the best, haven't you? Do you reckon? Oh, yes, I was very sure of my position. And me, Hilda. I know how Billy Boy's going to operate. He's going to be like one of them sort of sleeping partners, you know. He'll be swanning around doing the gentleman landlord, you know, while we do all the donkey work, like his mother used to get us to do. I hope you two are right. Well, of course we're right. I don't know what you're worried about. I take it you didn't get this job at Jim's Cafe, then, Hilda? <laughs> oh, I uh, never bother going for it, actually. Oh, do you Mr Walker? Yeah. Quiet tonight, isn't it? Yeah. I suppose it is, yeah. There's no suppose about it. There's nearly as many customers as staff. They might get busy later. And again, it might not. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a bit like your corner butchers, isn't it, you know? Um? You call a butcher's shop? Well, you know, I mean, it isn't always packed out with customers, is it? You know, and when it isn't, it takes it easy. It's like we're doing now, you know. We're here when required. Fred? <coughs> yes, mate? You didn't come and see me this afternoon with Bet and Betty, did you? No, well, uh, didn't see the point, like, you know. You didn't? No, I mean, as, I've, as I'm your right-hand man, I sort of have a fair idea what you have in mind, you know. You have? Yeah. Just don't see the point of discussing my future. <laughs> As it happens, Fred, you've got more reason than anybody to discuss your future. Right you are, then. Oh, that was a lovely meal, Terry. It really was. Oh, thank you. Oh, 
and FTB. <laughs> FTB? Full to bursting. It was an expression of my mother's. <laughs> Very uh, expressive. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> mints. You do like after dinner mints? Oh, well, I like them, but I don't know whether I can find a corner for one. Try. <laughs> It'll be your uh, sixth taste of the evening. Sixth taste? Avocado, steak, strawberries, cheese, coffee, and now chocolate. Oh, for... Ah, thank you. I always try to get as many tastes as possible into a meal. So long as they're complimentary, of course. I mean, I wouldn't like to eat a treacle butty after smoked salmon. <laughs> <laughs> no. Thank you. <clears throat> and do you play golf a lot? Hmm. For business reasons as much as for pleasure. And have you got a good, um, what do they call it, handicap? 22. Is that good? Not bad. I can't quite see you as a sportsman, Derek. Oh? <laughs> I've got quite good coordination, <laughs> so people say. Really? It's funny, isn't it, how you think you know somebody and then suddenly they do something, or, or you find something out about them. About... Do you think you know me, then? Well, I did. And what's made you change your mind? Oh, now, that's not a fair question, you fishy. <laughs> oh, yes, I am. Well, I mean... Look at you. I mean, the successful businessman, golfer, sitting in your own lovely home. Well, that's not the Derrick I knew. Well, it's come as a bit of a surprise to me, really. Has it? Well, to be honest, I seem to be in a rut. Not much of a job, no prospects. Very insecure. When out of the blue, I got a promotion. And suddenly, it all seemed very easy. Well, the man had to be there, though, to make the most of the moment. Yes. Mavis. Yes? I've got a fairly important question to ask you. Oh? Will you marry me? Will I? Look, I know we've only met up with each other again recently, but it wasn't accidental. Well, obviously it wasn't. I mean, I got in touch with you, didn't I? But why did I get in touch? Because I've been thinking about you, Mavis. I've been sitting in this house thinking, what's missing in my life? What would complete the picture? And the answer was you, Mavis. Every time it was you. You. So, would you do me the honour of becoming Mrs. Derek Wilton? Not that I expect an answer immediately, of course. I mean, I don't think for one moment you've been thinking about me like I've been thinking about you. Have you? Well... Well, during this last week, maybe. But obviously you'll need more time than that to come to such a, a momentous decision. Yes, of course you will. So, um... I'll leave it with you, then. Would you like another mint? Yes, please. Thank you. I went round in eighty four yesterday. Did you? This crack of dawn stuff for a game of soldiers. You can't be doing it to me. I'd still be in my bed, you know, only the other night I met this punter and he wanted somebody to get him to his London train early. And like a mug, I volunteered. See, breaking my own rules, my own fault, never offer. Oh, I'm sorry, I beg your pardon. What's up with you this morning? You look as if you've been smacked on the back of the head with a stocking full of cornflakes. Yeah, it's 26, will you love? I'm never myself until I've had a, someone to get me cough going, you know, and a paper. You're not by any chance uh, walking in your sleep, are you? <laughs> no, of course not. Oh, right. Sorry. Uh, hey, just a minute. You haven't paid me. Now, you weren't going to remind me, were you? Of course I was. I was just seeing how flipping dozy you were, that's all. Hangover, is it? I've got a tip for you. A bottle of light ale, but you've got to down it in two. There's no supping in it. It is not a hangover. I've never had a hangover in my life. Is that right? Mm. I feel sorry for you. At least I know as the day wears on, I'm going to feel a hell of a sight better than I do now. 
won't hear it. If you play it so... Hey, up. Oh, come on, Debbie. Can't it wait till I've had my breakfast? No. Hey, Deb, do us a favour, will you? Yeah. Hand me blue shirt for us. Got a load of washing to iron it yourself. I'm standing good when I do it. I always get the collar on somehow. Well, practice. That's what you need. Yeah. Having up to do with the washing. And listen, if it's up in your bed and stuffed in a drawer, it's not going to get washed. It's only going to get washed if it's in the Alibaba basket. Just don't say I didn't warn you. She could have had one shirt. Ah, oh, come on, Kev. She does a fair share. Here, while I think of it, seeing as she's doing the washing, go to Jackson's chip in the time, will you? And get fish and chips for the three of us. Yeah, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. like post. There'll be a lot of bills, I suppose. I'll get it. It's for me. Love letter, is it? Must be joking. None of lads who love me can read or write. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'll get in the bathroom before that, Kevin. Yeah, hey, kid. I'll treat us all to fish and chips at dinner, eh? What's the catch? No catch. Well, you could have me a blue shirt, couldn't you? Um, Daddy, these are more expensive. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm late, love. I couldn't find my car keys anywhere. I searched high and low, couldn't find them anywhere. And to finish, I thought, I'm going to have to get Brian Tilsley. Go to the telephone, and there they are on the pad. I don't know. I'm losing my mind. You've been busy. Just reasonable. Anyway, you coped. Yeah. Rita. What's up? I've got something I want to tell you. I'll have this one. Oh, thank you. Thanks very much. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well? You know, I went round to Derek's house last night. Oh, yeah, I meant to ask. What's it like? Oh, it, it's very nice. Well, I mean, but is the... it Buckingham Palace or a little terrace or oh, what? No, it's a semi with a nice garden. But, I mean, that's not what I want to tell you. You see... Well? Well, we'd had a meal and then... Um, well, and then he proposed. He proposed? <laughs> he actually asked you... <laughs> Derek actually asked you to marry him? Yes. Oh, love, <laughs> that's marvellous. Oh, and here's me rattling on about my car keys. Oh, I'm delighted for you. That's marvellous. Is it going to be a church do or what? Oh, and when? I mean, no point hanging around at your age. Peter, I, mean, be... I didn't accept him. Oh, Derek proposed to you and you turned him down? No, I didn't. Well, one thing at other, either oh, you did or you didn't. Peter, will you listen? I mean, he, he asked me. And when I got over the surprise, because I mean, I was completely bowled over. Yes. Well, I mean, he just took me by surprise, yes. you see. Well, I, I, mean, I didn't know what to do. Well, what did you say? Oh. I said, it'd have to give me time to think about it. Trust you. If a fairy popped out from under a mushroom and offered you three wishes, you'd say you want to think about it. Well, what's wrong with that? I mean, I don't see any reason to go rushing into things. I mean, after all, it is the biggest decision a person ever takes. You're right. You're quite right. Hey, what a turn up, though. <laughs> How do you feel? <laughs> I could hardly believe it was happening. I mean, I just can't say to myself, you ever have a dreamed all this? You haven't, have you? No, of course not. I mean, not. I'd be better give Derek a ring, see oh, if he knows out about Rita, this. Oh, Derek asked me, and I said, well, I said he'd have to give me time to think about it before... Well, before... Before you say yes, please. Mavis, this calls for a celebration. Go and put kettle on. <laughs> right, cock, I'm off. I'll be back about one o'clock. Oh, by the way, our Kevin's getting fish and chips for three of us. Yeah, I know. Right, I'll see ya. Put your barrel on. Yes, me. Oh, I would have done that. Job was generally due just before opening, you know. I've got my own methods, Fred. Things are going to be different now. Yeah, only, uh, like, I wasn't exactly clear what you were on about earlier on, you know. Well, it's simple enough, Fred. I'm afraid it's a case of last in, first out. Well, I mean, your mother had to take me on. The brewery insisted. I mean, she needed me. 
Yes, that was in my mother's time, Fred. That's the point. Times have changed. Yeah, but, I mean, the, the pub, it's going to need a cellar, man. It's not up to you to say what this pub needs, Fred. That's up to the landlord, me. I've got the licence now. Whatever did or didn't happen in my mother's time is all past history, all right? Yeah, it's all right saying that, but what about me? I'm afraid you're going to have to look for another job. Well, jobs just don't grow on trees, you know. Yes, I know that. That's why I'm suggesting you look right away. Oh, and, uh, incidentally, you're not just looking for a job, you're also looking for somewhere to live. That room you use goes with the job. And now the job's gone. I see. You just wave one lordly wave of your hand and I'm not only out of a job, I'm, I'm out of a home as well, is that it? Well, there's no good talking like that, there's no point. The point is, your job no longer exists, so like I say, start looking. There's uh, the evening news and the advertiser. You'll find jobs in there and accommodation. Thank you. Thank you very Thanks much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, I think I'll go and grab a bite to eat. Unless you want to take it first turn. No, I'll just as soon go later. Right. Well, uh, see you in about an hour. Rita, you won't tell anybody about it, will you, about me and Derek? Oh, Egg Mavis, that's the best bit of gossip I've ever had off you. I told you in confidence, Rita. Of course, I won't say anything. Fair dues. You want to make the big announcement yourself. Wouldn't rob you of that. But afterwards, I'll gossip like mad. Yeah, I don't know yet whether there's going to be an announcement. I mean, if I decide to say no, well, I'll hardly want to go telling anybody. You won't say no. How can you assume that? I'm not assuming it. I just know you. There's no way you'd turn down a chance to change your name to Mrs. Derek Wilton. Mrs. Derek Wilton. Yeah, right, kid. Fish, chips, peas, thrice. I tell you who was in the chipper. Wendy what's it out of your class? Wendy Nuttall. Yeah, that's the one. Bragging she was. Got her exam results this morning. Six passes. Dead cocky she was. Hey, if she's got her results, you should have yours, shouldn't you? Did you hear me? I heard you. Well, if she's got hers, why haven't you got yours? I have got them. They came this morning. How's you do? Rotten. Two grade fours, two grade fives. One even worse. How bad is it? Still, it's only exams, isn't it? I didn't pass any. Look at me. Listen, Kev, don't tell Dad, all right? Well, he's going to have to know sooner or later. Let's tell him now, get it over with. Well, I'll tell him when I'm ready. Don't you say anything. You won't, will you? Can't promise. I can't concentrate for some reason. I think it's we worrying about how I'm going to get my shirt ironed. I'll murder you. Look, Walker. I've put a lot of sweat in this boozer over a lot of years. It may seem a long time to you, Fred, but it doesn't to me. I've lived here all my oh, life. Oh, give over, will you? Swan it out in Jersey when I've been here all the time. Living up in the sunshine and I've been flogging my guts out. Excuse me. You know what I'd do if I was in your shoes? Huh. I'd get myself out to Jersey and try and get a job there. It's great there. You'd have to book your ideas up, mind you. That smells good, Betty. Oh, it is good. I made it, didn't I? Well, in that case, I'll treat it with the respect it deserves. I'll sit down to eat it. Oh, lovely. Listen, here. while you've been out in Jersey, I've been looking after this boozer for your mother, haven't I? Ask her, go on, get the blow and ask her, go on. For the last time, you are living in the past. The pub is in new hands. I can't afford you, and I haven't got the room for you, right? <laughs> I'll see you about half past five, lovey. All right. Thanks a lot, love. Uh, uh, Billy. Okay. Billy, there's something that I must say to you, love. You probably tell me that it's none of my business, but, well, I think you're being very, very hard on Fred. No, it's bad enough him losing his job these days now, ain't it? But he's losing his home as well. I mean, I know he's on the rough side. We all know that, but, oh, he's not a bad worker, love. Betty. I've got to run this place and try and make it pay. And the top and bottom of it is that it doesn't warrant employment for you, Bet, me and Fred. Well, I still think you're being very hard on him. I mean, what does your mother think about it? It's not my mother's problem, is it? And as you yourself said... I, not... get, I know, but you know what I think about it, don't you? Going down the job centre, are you? 
No, no, I'm not. Oh, don't tell me you found a job all by yourself. No, no, I haven't. And if you must know, for your information, I'm going out to the brewery. See what Faye's got to say about it. About what? Oh, you sacking me, that's what. I haven't sacked you. I asked you to look around for something else. It's that's all. the same thing, doesn't it? Anyway, I'm going out to Newton and Ridley's. See what they've got to say about it. Well, the service I've put in this pub here for the last, for the last eight years. Oh, fair enough, but I still think you'd spend your time better down the job centre. Oh, while you're at the brewery, give them a message for us, will you? Tell them I could shift a few more light tails. Hello. Afternoon, Hilda. Uh, you don't sell darning wool, do you? That's right, Hilda. We don't sell darning wool. Ah, tell the truth. I just can't think of anywhere around here that does these days. No. It stands vests, you see. Oh, I'll have a quarter of all sorts while I'm here. Very hard on vests, this Stan. Always has been. Of course, he doesn't change them often enough. That's his trouble. Is that right? Oh, yeah. I go on at him, you know, but it's like talking to the fire back. So he wears them till they're falling off him. Then, of course, there's a hole in them. <laughs> it's the sweat what does it. It's acid, you know, breaks down the wool. It's all part of the rich tapestry of marriage, this, isn't it, Hilda? Oh, yeah, well, you have to take the rough with the smooth, haven't you? <laughs> Mind you, with Stan, there's not been a lot of smooth. <laughs> Tell her after all. Oh. Is that what's giving you the collie wobbles about Derek? The thoughts of washing his dirty vest, that sort of thing. No, it's not that, really. Oh, it is a drawback. No use denying it. And it does help if you're in love. Either that or acclimatise through years of drudgery. I mean, look at Hilda. She's been washing Stan's vest for 40 years, so she can do it. But if Stan were a stranger, she couldn't, could she? To make you he. Rita, will you stop going on about Stan's underwear? It, it's not that sort of thing, not really. You see, well, what I've got to ask myself is, is Derek the right man? Yes, yeah, Betty, look, yeah. you know, it's great after our day's graft to down that first pint. You don't wait to finish your work. You're down in pints every chance you've got. I'll tell you this, I wouldn't ride in your taxi, not for a gold clock. Gave over a lack of drink, yes, but just the one. I'm a one drink man, these. Yeah, one after another, you mean. <laughs> oh, hey, Billy's gone in for you for being late, love. So, what's new? How did you go on at the brewery? I didn't see anybody, Betty. Oh. Didn't see Sarah Ridley, George Newton, nobody. The only person I saw was that little... Tap end of a bloke half up upstairs in the office. Yeah. Still have to make an appointment. You know what I can see anybody? Next flaming Tuesday. Oh, dear. Well, you just have to wait then. Did you make an appointment, love? No. He already knew I'd got the push. What's the point, Betty? Oh, that's a shame. Oh. Keep you talking at the brewery, did they? They invite you up to the boardroom. George Newton give you one of his big fat cigars. No, I haven't seen anybody yet. No, I didn't think you would do. George Newton's in London for a week. Sarah Ridley's on her holidays. Barmers, I think. Incidentally, when I took over the licence, I did warn them I'd be making certain staff changes. Just out of courtesy. They didn't raise any objections. Now then, if you're still with us, perhaps you wouldn't mind doing a bit. <laughs> the customer over there wants serving. He'll push me too far, he will. Hey, just you keep your temper. It would suit him fine if you give him an earful, love. What's going on? And um, while you're thinking about it, put one in there. Oh, right, love. I'll tell you what's going on. As far as he's concerned, I've got the push. As far as he's concerned, I'm redundant. You're joking. I'm not joking. It's not only my job, it's my flipping home as well, isn't it? Oh, well, hard lines fit. It's a yeah, tough old world. Thank you, love. Oh. Mind you, I won't be sleeping in doorways while there's pals like Betty around. How do you mean? Well, you could always take in a lodger, couldn't you? You've got that spare room. It's always nice to know it's there, Betty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen, he just can't talk you out just like that. You've got time in here, mate. Oh, he couldn't care flipping less. Listen, the, the law cares. You're entitled to redundancy, but compensation. No, not in the not in the licence trade, mate. I'm you, Workers have rights, Fred. Am I right, Michael? Cool. Too flaming many, mate. You stick with me, Fred. I'll not let this Billy Walker fella push you about. You stick with me. I'll have a think about this. Look, uh, I might as well have this evening paper delivered. You know, put it on the bill, eh? Right, oh. Well, start tomorrow. That is, if I still got delivery, lads. Why? What's your problem? Oh, a couple of them have got their exam results today. CSE, do they call it? Done all right as well. So they should be aiming for something higher than delivering newspapers. Yeah, uh, uh, Debbie's been taking her CSEs. Oh, has she? How's she gone on? Well, I don't know. She hasn't had her results through yet. But she should be all right. I mean, she's not behind the door when it comes to brains, are <laughs> Debbie? Right, I'll see ya. Okay, try. Ta Bye. Another day nearly over, eh, Mavis? I shall be glad when we shut that door. Oh, so shall I. I just want to sit down, get my shoes off now. Derek! Hello, Mavis. You look radiant. 
Evening. Evening, Derek. Oh, hello. How are you? I'm fine. And yourself? Oh, fine. Derek, what, what are you doing here? Didn't we say Friday? Yeah, I know we did, I know. But I was at work just tidying up the desk and I thought, I shouldn't be doing this. I should be with Mavis. So here I am. Call it a day, eh, Mavis? I mean, take Derek up to the flat. I can cope with whatever, you know, till we're closed. Well, are you sure? Because I don't... Certainly. Mind. Go on. You two want to be alone. You've a lot to talk over. <laughs> you ain't it, you little belter. What are you? Soft in the head. Hiya. Hey, Dad. There's two pizzas on the grill for you and I, Kev. Just won't do them for about ten minutes. Oh, what are you having? I've had mine. See ya. Hey, hang on a minute. Well, I'm going out. I still meet Shirley. It'll wait. Well, I'm late now. We're going to take pictures. Look, you're not going anywhere till I've had a word with you. It's about your exam results. Well, what about them? Well, as far as I can gather, most people have been getting them today. I wondered what happened to yours. I'd probably say weeks. It's that school. They're all puddled down there. But it was when I went. Well, if that's the case, I'll give him a tinkle and see what the plane at. No, no, I won't bother. Unless you've had him. What was that letter that came this morning? Well, for me, I told you. Was that your exam results, Debbie? Come on, Debbie, stop mucking me about. Yeah. Well, I want to see them then, don't I? Well, come on. In there, Abby. You can't go in my bag. That's private. Debbie, I want to see those exam results. And I'm telling you, lady, you're not going out of this house until I have. So, come on, let's see them. Well, of course I'm pleased to see you, Derek. It's just that I wasn't expecting you. I mean, we did say Friday, well, I couldn't we? stay away. Ever since last night, Mavis, I've not stopped thinking about us. Yes, well, I've been thinking too. I said I would. I knew you would be. And I suddenly thought, what is the point of staying away from Mavis until Friday? Well, we've made arrangements, that's all. I, um, I overheard someone talking in the office this afternoon, and they were quoting a saying, um, today is the first day of the rest of my life. Have you ever heard that saying, Mavis? Yes, sir, I think I have heard it. Yes, well, today is the first day of the rest of our life. It starts now, not Friday night. We've so much to decide, Mavis, where we're going to live. I mean, I'm assuming my house, but you may have other ideas. And then there's the wedding arrangements. I, I know it's a woman's privilege to name the day, but I'd like it to be fairly Derek, soon. Derek, you're just going too and fast for... I brought something for you. Well, it's flaming obvious why you were hiding it. No wonder you didn't want me to see it. What's going to? I would have told you. Oh, yeah. Two grade fours, two grade fives, and what's, what's this U letter mean? Unclassified. And that's even worse, is it? Gordon Bennett, Debbie, what were you doing? What were you thinking about? I'm no good at exams. Come on, you're not thick. I'm just no good at exams. I've never been any good at exams. Look, I'll tell you why you did no good. Because you spent too much time listening to flaming pop music and reading daft magazines. I did not. It's about time you realised, Debbie, it's an hard world. And you've got to put a bit of effort in. But you didn't even try. And you swore blind to me you were doing your swatting. I did, do. I'm just not going to exams, Dad. Well, I'm telling you, lady, things are going to be a lot different round here. From now on, you're going to start working a lot harder and get down some studying. And you'll take these again and pass them. I don't want to go back to school. It's a waste of time. Look, I'm having no argument about it. You're not leaving school without some decent qualifications behind you. I hate school and I'm not going back. And I don't care what you say. You can't let me go and I'm never going back. Oh, go on, open it. Oh. Do you like it? Oh, it's a beautiful ring, Derek. I wanted you to have a really good engagement ring, Mavis. Oh, but just a minute, Derek. I mean, we did agree, didn't we, that I'd have time to think about that. Well, what is there to think about? We've only ourselves to consider, Mavis. There's no one else to worry about now. I'll be very proud to see you wearing that, Mavis, because it was Mother's. Your mother's? Yes. So you see, it's very special to me. Oh, I'm sorry, Derek, but you're taking entirely too much for granted. Oh, I can't put that ring on. No, you'll have to take it back. I mean, in the first place, I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to marry you. You haven't? No, you just seem to assume that because you've asked me, I'm bound to say yes. No, I mean, I hoped you'd say yes, but I was only hoping. I wasn't assuming. Yes, and I told you that I needed time to think about it. 
Oh, Derek, well, you have to take it back. But I tell you this, if I do decide to get engaged to you, that ring's the last ring I'll ever want to wear. Take these, all right? Yeah. Can I have not up, then? Not as I've noticed. She'll be sulking. Well, she can do what she likes. We can still get his own breakfast, can't we? We're not helpless. You know what she's gonna say, don't you? What? She's gonna say, you let me leave school without any qualifications, so why won't you let her? Is she? When she thinks of it, yeah. <laughs> well, she can say all she likes. Anyway. Morning. Morning. Right. Yeah, you, you didn't have to get up with us, you know. You're on your holidays. Holidays from school, you mean? Hey, Deb, we'd have my jeans for us, please, if you got to know. I suppose so. So. Uh... You let him leave school, didn't you? Told you. And what's so different about me? You let him leave with no qualifications. I said she would, didn't I? <sighs> well, you're a lot smarter than he is. Hey. Everybody's smarter than he is. Hey, come on. Look, let's not start all that again. If you wanted to leave school, you should have made sure you had some decent qualifications to leave with. Well, I'll tell you what I think, shall I? No, you don't have to. It's because he's a boy and I'm a girl, isn't it? Look, I don't want to hear any more about it. I've said all I'm going to say. You can just do as you're told for once. All my mates are leaving. I'm going to be in classes with them younger than me. They believe it, can't you? Oh, it's all right for you. Look, I don't want to hear any more of it. What did I just say? You're not leaving school, and that's an end to it. And that's not the only thing. There's been too much do as you like in this house. For one thing, we're going to put a stop to everybody eating as and when they feel like it, starting today. Satisfied now? No. This dinner time, we're all going to eat in here and together, right? We're going to start to behave more like a proper family. His mother's? His mother's engagement ring, yes. Oh. Well, I told him I wasn't having it, not his mother's. I see. You don't blame me, do you? No. God, I thought he'd changed, I really did. He hasn't. Well, it's made me wonder. Well, does this mean it's all off? Well, not exactly. I mean, I've given him a definite answer. No, just that I wouldn't have his mother's ring, that's all. So, when are you going to give him a definite answer? I don't know. And what's it going to be? Well, I don't know that either, do I? I thought I told you to do the cellar. I'm going to, only uh, there's something I wanted to ask you first. What? Well, will it be all right if I uh, have the rest of the afternoon off from, say, about... Uh, what, about half twelve? No, it won't be all right. While you're being paid to work here, you can flame him while stay and work like the rest of us. OK. Amazing. Only it's just that, uh, being as you want me to go look for another job, I thought I've, <laughs> I've got enough time to go and do it, haven't I, you know? Oh, well, if you're going to look for work, uh, why didn't you say it's different, is that? So, uh, it's all right then, is it? Yeah, of course you can, Betty and I'll manage. Take as long as you like. Oh, and to... Good luck, eh? So. Did you, uh, Did you hear all that, Hilda? Or shall I go back in and say it all again for you? Hey, yeah, unless you cheek you. I have to do my dusting, haven't I? Yeah, just take a bit of dusting. Especially, uh, Especially keyholes. <laughs> right, Betty, love. Well, I'll be off early this dinner. Uh, job hunting. Well, if you was to ask me, that'd be my guess. That'd be a good guess at all, Hilda. Oh, well. All the best, love. It's not the easiest thing in the world to be doing these days, is it? No, well, not much choice, have I? No. Seems a shame, after all the time you've been here, love. Yeah, it is a shame. Mm. And still, laughing boy through there won't be happy until I'm through that door. Uh... Well, uh, I know where there's a good job going. For somebody with a bit of uh, energy and initiative. Somebody what likes working his own hours and out in the fresh air. Where? Stan's wind around. <laughs> no, it's right. Nobody's took it over. So whoever comes forward can have the um, the car, the bucket, chamois, ladders, mm. and the goodwill, all for uh, well a realistic figure. Oh yes, Hilda, and uh, and what is a realistic figure? One hundred and fifty pound would secure it. One hundred and fifty quid. You must be joking. <laughs> oh, must I? One hundred and fifty quid. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't seem to be getting him down, does it? I suppose we should be grateful for that. Oh, there's time yet. Atten stands wind around to look a bit different when he spent the afternoon having doors shut in his face. Hmm. How did your Debbie go on with her exams? You were expecting to hear yesterday, weren't you? Ah, uh, yeah. Well, 
Fair to middling, I suppose. It's hard to tell with them grades they have these days, isn't ah. it? Uh, 175, yeah. So what's she going to do with herself, then? Uh, she's going back to school. Uh, going to stop on, like. Oh. Well, she must have done all right, then. <coughs> right, you lucky people. Chance of a lifetime. Who fancies a day at the races? You just buy your share of the petrol, buy the driver a drink. No, tar. And who's going to put a sink in number nine Misley Street if I go to the races with you? Nobody. So what? So I've got a living to earn, that's what. I'll see you. Sure. Sure, then. I'll have a faith, though. Right. Hey, me. me. No, she wouldn't. What? Like to go to the races, would you? Oh, no. Anyway, you. she prefers greyhounds. Don't say I didn't ask you. Sure, then. Sure. Thanks. Thanks. Why, though? I mean, why should it matter so much it was his mother's ring? Oh, Rita. Oh, Rita what? Well, after the way it always had to be his mother first and me second, then it turns out he wants me to have a mouldy old ring as yes. well. Yes, yes, but what I mean, it... Well, all right, maybe he's been a, a little bit silly, a, a little bit thoughtless. A lot? No, not a lot, a little. And if you really wanted to marry him, you'd overlook it. But if deep down you don't, then he's giving you the excuse. I don't need an excuse, Rita. I mean, I can say no if I want to, you know. Oh, well, I'm very glad to hear it. Supposing he'd asked you years ago, could you have answered him then? No, well, he's changed so much since then. For the better? Oh, yes, yes. Well, then, if it's not him, perhaps it's the idea of marriage at all that you're frightened of. No, I'm not frightened of it, Rita. I mean, thank you very much, but I'm not, no. I would be. You? Hmm. If I ever got asked again, I would. And I've been through it once, you haven't. Well, perhaps I am a little frightened. I mean, well, not frightened exactly, but... Oh, yes, you're right. I am. I mean, who wouldn't be frightened of something when they've waited so long for it to happen? And two, three, four makes five. There you go, Mike. Cheers, Michael. My pleasure. Right. Synchronise your watches. Now it's nearly 25 to. Ten fast. Must have a bit of dust in this. Never mind that. I'll see you in 20 minutes, right? Right, well, uh, I'll be off then. Anywhere particular in mind? Well, one or two, then I'll have a look in the paper, see what's going. Well, let us know if you need any references. I dare say I could cobble a few white lies together. Anything to help? Thank you. Very much. Help get them shifted, you mean? Yeah, Of course, that's what I mean. Your mother wouldn't have treated him like this, you know. That's because my mother wasn't all that handy when it came to humping crates and barrels about. Mm. She needed him. How long do you think he would have lasted if she hadn't, eh? Hmm. Yes, my love. Uh, fight shiny, please, Mr. Okay, kid. <laughs> hey, hey, what are you doing in here? for a drink. Well, you can just take yourself out again. What was I saying this morning? I was going to come. Look, your dinner's on the table, and I want you there to eat it. And I don't mean in five minutes, I mean now. <clears throat> Shall I cancel your shandy, though? Looks like it. Ah. That's the way. Short authority every now and again keeps the kids in the place. Not like Bill, though, is it? No. It should seem a bit outside, doesn't it? Mind you, he's got two of them to look after. Yeah. Can't be any picnic. Yeah, but if you don't show them who's boss, they're going to walk all over you. It's terrible sometimes being a parent, you know. Yeah. Well, that terrible, I mean, you bachelors just wouldn't know, would you? No, I don't suppose we would. OK, you didn't have to do that. Well, I do care. I care when I come home and find you're not here and I have to go dragging you out of a blasted pub. Yeah, made me look a little kid or something, didn't you, eh? I can't show me face in there again. Good. Now shut up and eat your dinner. Have I injured James? Oh, yeah, but, uh... There's no touch you want, is there? What? No, no. Dad, have you out for me? Ah, uh, no, no. Only I've done the washing up from this morning, then had to clean round and then made us dinners. And I know there's upstairs to do, but I'll do that later, all right? Hey, what's up now? Only what I can't do. I can't do all that, looking after the house, cooking, washing and ironing, and still find time to do my schoolwork so I can get qualifications you expect me to get. I know I should be able to, but I'm sorry. I just can't. Come on now, Debbie, love. It's late dinner time. So if I've let you down, well, I'm sorry. You haven't let anybody down. Well, it's somebody like it this morning. Well, all I want is for your own good. I don't want you leaving school without to show for it. Well, you better so 
thought it was something different then, because I can't take my mum's place and get CSEs at the same time. I mean, never mind, I've no time to myself, no time to go out. I'm used to that. There's no way I can carry on like this with schoolwork and housework and all the rest. I can't. <laughs> Touting for business. Hey, hey, do you fancy a day at the races? Go oh, in your car if you want. I'm not proud. Oh, yeah. Who's going to keep an eye on your missus if I'm not there? You've got a point. <laughs> Come on, Jacko, let's get going. Oh, another one of the idle rich, eh? Idle, maybe. Tell you how rich he is when we get back. Come on, mate, get cracking. Let's be up. I thought you were having a lie down. Oh, I can't, Richard. I just can't. I've got to tell him. Derek. Yeah. Oh, it's no good. I mean, I've just got to face up to it, because it isn't fair keeping them hanging on, is it? Well, if you're not sure... Well, of course I'm not sure. I can't ever be sure. That's just it. Well, all right, then. And if I can't ever be sure, then I can't ever say yes, can I? No. Well, then. So what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to ring him up and I'm going to ask him to come round, and then when he comes, I'm, I'm going to tell him no. No, I can't marry him. OK. How did you feel, Rita, when Len proposed to you? It wasn't like this, was it? Not a lot, no. I always knew I was going to say yes, if that's what you mean. You always knew. Well, you see, I don't think I'll ever know. And the longer it goes on, the worse it gets. I'll just have to tell him. Right, then. If you want, <laughs> you like watching other people work, do you? Depends on who they are. I'm glad I'm making somebody happy. Yeah, I bet your staff are grateful. You send them off backing horses while you're here doing the donkey work, eh? Hey. Horses? What horses? Well, Fred G. Gone to the races, isn't he? At least that's what they were telling me. Oh, that, yeah. Yeah, I, I forgot about that. Yeah. Hiya. I didn't know what we want for us tea. Oh. I don't know. Fish and chips. I'll tell you what. Ah, Kevin can go and get him. Yeah, great. No, don't go. Are you all right now, then, are you? Still don't want to go back to school. Do you know you don't half remind me of your mum sometimes? Stumming as they come. Look who's talking. Even when she were poorly, she wouldn't be nursed. I had to see to everybody else before herself. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and I know you've... I had a bit of a rough time trying to take her place, Debbie. I didn't mean them things I said. No, you were right to say them. You were right to say them. But don't think I'm not grateful, cos I am. And I'm proud of you. I'm proud of both of you. You can't be right proud of me exam results. Well... We can't all be scholars, can we? At least not with two daft fellas to look after both at the same time. Now, if there are a CSE in looking after folk, and you'll get a grade one every time. Listen. Suppose we said this. I'll agree to you leaving school so long as you can land a job first. You mean it? Yeah. Oh, Dad, thanks. Now, hang on a minute, hang on. Because I don't want to go back to school. I don't, honest. Amy Dad says I can leave school. Only if she gets... If I get a job first. Oh, I might have known. Always gets her own way in the end. I don't. Not for tea, is there? Fish and chips. And you've got to go and fetch them. Have I? Echo's light. Auntie? Well, go on, Kev. You've just come in. We've got settled. Oh, we know his boss, don't we, eh? Always gets her own way in the end. And mushy peas if they have any. Oh, yes, your highness. Of course, your highness. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, now, Strad, come on, then. Have you heard out? He's not back yet. I don't know where he's got to. Oh, what he's got lucky, hasn't he? You know he's getting the boot here. Fred is? Yeah. Let me walk up on Strad. Wants him out. Good job he's got no family to provide for, that's all I can say. He's not exactly at the best age for finding another job, either. No, oh, he's not, no. Mind you, you managed it, didn't you? Uh, well, yes. Find a bit of please, Betty. Oh, Evening. Evening. Any joy then, Fred? Uh, I haven't. Oh. Oh, tough life outside nowadays. Now you can say that again. Now, right, go and sit down. Take the weight off your feet. The tea in the pot's still warm. I oh, will, yeah. Tough. And how's Jack? Been enjoying the sport of kings, I hear. Not many kings there, as I noticed. Been watching Gigi's eye, but lose mostly. So you didn't have much luck today, then, you and Fred? Fred? Oh, no, I just bumped into him coming in like. Oh. Well, let me tell you, then. Fred's had diabolical look all day. Mind you, he doesn't know it yet. I'm just going to go and tell him. <laughs> hey! Now, what do you think he meant by that? So, no joy, eh? Seems nobody wants to know. What sort of a job are you looking for? Being a jockey? A bookies runner? Or just taking a crafty afternoon off work, be lying through your teeth? I don't know what you're on about. Oh, don't you? Well, perhaps you will know what I'm on about it when I tell you that I want you out of this job, out of here, out of that room, by the end of the week. And I don't want any more of your funny stories, either. Oh, come on! No, you come on. You want time off to look for work, do you? Well, now you've got all the time in the world. Just you listen to me, sunshine. That's how it is, is it? Well, you just wait here. Just hang around here. Go on, stick around. Just you wait. Jack. What? Jack. What? Look, you're a witness to this. I want you to come through here and tell him what you've been telling me. Hey, I'm no expert, Fred. Of course you are. Come on. Oh, yeah, come on. That's just what you've been telling me earlier on. Come on. Hey, Betty, go and have a listen. Find out what's going on. I won't. Well, they could be murdering one another. <laughs> be on your head if they are. All right, tell him. Go on. Tell him what you told me. Is this your brief, is it? No, no, I'm, I'm just like... Uh... He's a witness, isn't he? And he's one who knows something that you've been trying to keep away from me. Oh, he does, does he? And what's that? No, we, we're just talking, like. Oh, yeah, we've had all afternoon for talking, haven't we? tell him. Right. It's a question of severance pay. You what? That's right. If a fella gets fired, then he's entitled. Or so I've heard, anyway. Severance pay? Severance pay? That's what you've been trying to keep away from me, innit? That's why you didn't mind if I went out there looking for a job, was it? <laughs> yeah, lost. And you can take your mate with you. I'm not having folk in my living room shouting the odds. It's the law of this land, sunshine. The law of this flipping land. And if you went out and make me out of here, you've got to pay compensation. Compensation for the time I've been here. Eight years in this job, right? No chance. No chance? Well, there's no chance of me leaving. Come on, Jack. That'll do for the time being. Yeah, right. See you. Oh, Derek. Oh, uh, Mavis. Uh, would you like a drink? Uh, oh, um, I, I think I'd rather wait until I know what I've got to drink, too. Yes, well, um, do you... Mavis, it's just one thing before you give me your answer. I wouldn't want to think that I'd spoiled everything by what I did last night. I mean, by offering you my mother's ring. Oh, no. I hadn't thought, no, that's it's not all. not at all. It hasn't put you off? No, it wasn't that at all. No. Oh. I was frightened it might have. Oh. oh. Thank you. Thank you. Derek, talking about your mother. Um, well, you, you've been on your own ever since she died. And, well, you must have been very lonely at times, and it, it just occurred to me that perhaps 
that was why you'd asked me. Oh, Mavis, this is so, so typical. Is it? Worrying away about other people's feelings, not thinking about yourself. But am I sure? How do I feel? Listen, I'm very happy. I feel that a lot of things have come together in my life, and really it's for that reason that I want to share my happiness and share it with you. Yes, well, I appreciate that. So stop worrying that. about me. There's no need. Derek, I'm not a young girl anymore. We're well, neither of us teenagers. No, but what I mean is, I mean, the, the idea of marriage, it's a very big step for me, it is. Well, it is for me, yes, too. Yes, but I mean, after all these years of not being married. Listen, Mavis, think about it this way. It's not a step you'll be taking alone. Oh, no. No, admittedly. You'll never again have to face anything alone. From the moment I put that ring on your finger, it'll just be the two of us. You'll not be Miss Riley anymore. You'll be Mrs. Wilton. Yes. You don't object to the name, do you? I mean, I've often thought how difficult it must be for men with names like uh, Pickersgill or Ramsbottom to ask a woman to share it with them. But Wilton, that's not a bad name, is it? No, it's a very nice name. I used to get the odd joke at school about it, of course. If ever I was in trouble, which I wasn't very often, but if I was, they'd say, um, ho oh, ho, Wilton's on the carpet. <laughs> well, I'm very glad you have no objection to sharing my name, Mavis. And, in fact, I'm deeply honoured. Derek, can we be sure after all this time? Yes. Oh, yes. I'm positive. I've never been more positive of anything in all my life. Oh. And I'm happier now than I've ever been before. I love you, Mavis. I... I love you, Derek. Oh, this is all like a dream. It's all like a wonderful dream. It's like a dream for me too, Derek. Sorry, Mrs Grimshaw. I'm a bit pushed this morning. It won't be before dinner. What was the address again, love? I'm sorry, hang on a sec, will you? Kevin, can you turn that racket down? I can't hear the flaming words he's saying. Thanks. Sorry, love, uh, what was the address again? 22 Canal Street. Look, uh, I'll be there as quick as I can, OK? All right, I'll see you. Till I know. Right, I'm off. Off where? Out, I'll see you later. Hang on, what about this lot? You're not helpless, are you? All right, you two. She's telling Sky off to watch enough, isn't she? Listen who's talking. You need a map to find sick. Look, that's enough. Look, I thought we had it all sorted. From now on, we all do our share of the donkey work. Yeah. Well, I can't hang about now, can I? I'm going to be late for the garage. Where's she off to, anyway, what's so important? Yeah, where are you off to? I'm off to find myself a job, aren't I? It's a bit early, isn't it? Well, I'm not going to get out sitting round here, am I? See you later. I'll say one thing for Aunt Debbie. She doesn't let the grass grow under her feet. I reckon she'll find out. With her qualifications, she's got about as much chance of getting a job as I of becoming the next mayor of Weatherfield. Oh, why? Well, when you do, can we have your big black name like service? Hey, it's nothing to joke about, Kevin. It's your sister's future we're talking about here. Who's joking? I mean, she might not have much on paper, but I'll say one thing for Aunt Deb. She never gives up without a good scrap. True. Well, it seems to be the only size that we have left. We did have some bigger ones, but we seem to have sold them all yesterday. What are them for? Well, you asked me for them, felt tip pens. Drawing pins, I said. Drawing pins? Oh, I'm sorry. But they were together, you see, side oh. by side on the shelf. That's 12p, please. Oh, well, shall we take in criminal proceedings? But if you don't mind me saying so, you don't seem to be your usual self this morning. Oh. Honestly. Bad night, that is. I didn't sleep too well, oh, actually. I thought so. Hot milk drink before you go to bed at night. Now, that's a secret. I've sworn by it for years. You just try it and soon put some sparkle back in your eyes. <laughs> I'm fine, really, I am. And a few days away wouldn't do you any harm, either. It'll give you something to look forward to. You can't go through life thinking unless it only work, you know. That's no good to anybody. Morning. Morning. You hear me? Yes, yes, oh. I do. You just think on. I'll be seeing you. <laughs> I didn't expect to be greeted with streamers at Sourceworks Band, but I wouldn't have minded the odd good morning. Oh, I'm sorry, Rita. I was miles away. And how you feel. When he's around, I wish I was on all. What? Miles away. Oh. Well, aren't you going to ask me how I got on? What, with passionate Percy? No, with Derek. Give us a chance.
chance to get my coat off. Hey, you didn't chicken out, did you? You did see him? Yes, I did. Did you tell him what he could do with his mother's engagement? Oh, ring? yes, I did. And his proposal? Well. Well what? We're engaged. Engaged? Yes. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? I mean, oh, it was just so sympathetic and understanding. And it, I mean, it obviously thought just as much about the situation as I had. And Well, he saw everything from my point of view. Oh, I was wrong about him, Rita, really, was he? He really has changed. And, and when he said he wanted to marry me, and, and I could see that he wasn't thinking about himself or his mother, well, I couldn't say no, could I? Mavis Riley, you sly old dog. <laughs> Come on, let's look at your ring. Well, I haven't got it yet. You haven't got it? No. Are you giving yourself away on a promise? <laughs> well, we thought if it was all right with you, we'd go out this morning. Yeah, take rest at day off if you like. Well, your mind's not going to be on what you're doing here, is it? You do think I've done the right thing, Rita, don't you? It doesn't matter what I think, love. Do you reckon you've done the right thing? That's what counts. Oh, yes, I do. I mean, it was a bit of a shock at first, because I, I didn't know what had hit me for a while, but I've been thinking about it all night. And yes. Yes, it really is the right thing. There's your answer, then. Quiet! If Mrs Walker could see this place now, she'd hit the roof. Did you say something, Hilda? This place, I say, the state of it. And I can remember the day you'd have thought twice about coming in here without a collar and tie. Never mind having a shave in here. What am I supposed to do, Hilda, with his lordship there looking the bathroom? Yeah, well, you won't have that problem much longer, will you? Have you found anywhere yet? Because I did hear that Mrs Ussie down Incoming Street was looking for a lodger. Oh, I'm not that desperate, Hilda, to have very much. Oh, you will be by the end of the week, though, won't you? We'll see about that. That's not what Billy Walker reckons. Billy Flaming Walker isn't holding all the cards, you know. <laughs> Doesn't seem to have a bad hand from where I'm standing. That thing giving up the ghost, is it, Hilda? Uh, no, no, it hasn't. I've just finished in here, as a matter of fact. Good, then you can get cracking on the bar, can't you? Hang on, Fred, I want a word for me. Yeah. Close the door on your way out, Hilda. Well, I'm listening. I've been thinking, haven't I, about what you were saying last night, about compensation. Go on. You're not serious. Try me. After all you've had from this place? Well, talk about seven years of plenty. Eight years, as it happens. And eight years of flogging my guts out, hasn't it? Now, don't try that on Billy Walker, because it won't work. I've told you this before, and I'm going to say it again. I want full compensation for eight years I've been here. And if you can't see that, well, happen the law can. No idea what I'm going to choose, oh, you know. Oh, you Derek. know when you see them, Mavis. Well, I expect I will, yes. You seem to know where you're going, Derek. Yes, it's this big place in the corner. Oh, is it? Oh, do you know the times There's nothing you fancy here, but plenty more shops. But aren't they expensive? Don't worry about that. You choose whatever you want. You're going to be wearing it a long time. Shall we go inside? Good morning. Uh, can I help you? Only if you expect to find a job. Thought that worked fine. Well, let's face it, kid, we haven't got much to offer, have we? <laughs> you speak for yourself. I mean, CSE isn't that. What you like being sound like me, Dad. Oh, stop worrying about him. He can't force you to go back to school, can he? You don't know me, Dad. There must be summer. That's what I've been telling myself for weeks, kid, and look where it's got me. And I reckon I'm one of lucky ones. Lucky ones? Yeah. I have only been looking for a month. Try that one on again, please. This one? Yes, please. Oh, thank you. Yeah. What do you think? Well, I think they're all very nice. I know, well, that's the trouble. <laughs> Spoiled for choice. 
Would you like to think about it for a while? Shall we go away and have a bite to eat and come back later? I don't think so. I'm sure I wouldn't find it any easier. Oh, I'm sorry to be taking up so much of your time. That's what we're here for, madam. See, I like this one. Actually, I liked it the first time you tried it on. Oh, Derek. <laughs> it's entirely up to you, Mavis. Well, it looks right. You'd be surprised the people who come in here and go for the flashiest looking ring they can find without the slightest mm. consideration for taste. That is a point, Mavis. Hmm. Well, if Madam has decided on that one, I'll get a nice box for it. Well, do you think I could just have another look at, at that other one? You know, the solitaire. Uh, the one on the other tray? Uh, no, no, the one that you put back in the window. I'm ever so sorry to be such a nuisance. You're being no such thing. Choosing an engagement ring should be one of the most exciting days in a girl's life. You take all day if you want to. Some folk have money to burn. This flaming machine was burning. Well, you must be earning it to chuck it away. Heaven knows when. If you're not in here, you pop it bad up in Rovers. Hey, hey, I'm, I'm not finished. Want it back then, do you? That's what I call a very happy 20 minutes, that. A cup of lukewarm dishwater and 80 pence up the swatty. I'll pass your compliments on to management. We're always very pleased to have a satisfied customer. Well, are you coming or aren't you? Boy, you're not likely to find a job sat on the wall in precinct, are you? I'm not likely to find a job nowhere else, neither. So I might as well go somewhere there's a bit of company. So are you coming? No, ta. I might as well go home. Have another look through last night's paper, see if I've missed out. Suit yourself, but you're wasting your time. Some I'm not short of, isn't it? Right then, I'll see you tomorrow. Yes, yeah, more so. You know, if you make that tea last much longer, I'll just start charging you rent on it. Oh, I am sorry, I didn't realise you were desperate for the table. It was meant as a joke. Well, I'm not even moved for jokes, am I? Oh. Not been a very good morning, I take it. Oh, yeah, fantastic. We've been to this place where we can go and meet all our mates every morning. Have a chat, past time of day. It's called a job centre. Only trouble is they don't have any jobs. Not for the likes of me, any road. Oh, I see, and what sort would that be? Film star? Model? Beauty consultant? No, it wouldn't. We haven't all got our heads in clouds, you know. Oh, I see, it's just the kind I get working here, is it? Well, I wouldn't know about that, would well, I? I'm telling you, aren't I? Last one I had lasted three days. As soon as I made it clear to her this was not a social centre for a boyfriend, she was off like a rocket. And you haven't got anybody else? Not yet. A couple have rung up, but none of them have turned up. Still, I live in hope. So, if you know anybody who's not afraid of hard work, odd hours, and can take a bit of stick from the customers without throwing a bowl of soup over them, do us a favour, eh? Point them in my direction. Yes, look. What are you doing here? I thought you were out for your dinner. Just call in to pick up the post. It's just as well, because I only got a pie for myself. Well, you sound a bit more chirpy than you did this morning. Got reason to be, haven't I? Oh, I. Just ask who's got a job, then. You've got a job? Right. So I don't want to hear no more talk about going back to school. What sort of a job? Waitress. Waitress? That's right. Start tomorrow morning. And if you and our kid think you come scrounging free fry ups, you can forget it. Hey, hang on a minute. Where is this job? Jim's Cafe. Jim's Cafe? Oh, come on. What's up with it? What's up with it? A waitress in that place? The floor cloths get treated with more respect. It's a job, Dad. Look. If you've just snapped up, the first thing that's come along, just so you can get out of going back to school, you've got another thing coming. School? That's all you can think about, isn't it? You never wanted me to get a job in the first place. I'm thinking about you, aren't I? I don't want you to end up in some dead-end job bored stiff. I mean, I know it sounds exciting now, but where's it going to get you? What have you got to look forward to? I'll tell you what I've got to look forward to. To getting up in mornings and starting a proper job for the first time in my life. And I had hope that you might have at least to wish me good luck a summit. Got a minute? Yeah, why? I want a word. Well, I'm listening. Out the back. What I've got to say is between you and me, and I can do very nicely, mm -hmm. thank you, without Perry Mason here sticking in his four pennies. Listen, if it's about my compensation... You want to hear what I've got to say, or don't you? Nothing to lose, I suppose. Right, then. Hey, you just watch your step, because I wouldn't trust Perry Walker as far as I could choke him. You're forgetting something, Jacko. 
It's not him that's got me under you. It's the other way around. <laughs> Good thinking. But if you need to consult your legal advisor, you know where I am. Shut the door. I've been thinking about what you were saying this morning. <coughs> Not much choice, have you? Unless you want to slug it out well, in why court. Why can't you just listen for a minute? Why do you have to come out with both fists flying all the time? It's the only way I know to defend myself against fellas like you. Oh, this isn't getting us anywhere. Will you just shut up and listen for a minute? Since you and me had them words this morning, I've been doing a lot of thinking. And I, I think you've got a point. I do owe you some I'm listening. Well, for a start, you can forget what I said about leaving here by the end of the week. And if it takes you longer than that to get fixed up, be my guest. And if you want a reference, you know you've only got to ask. You'll be on full pay, of course, and you'll have a roof over your head. And? And when you do go, there'll be a little financial gesture from me just to help you on your way. Like, uh, like what? Like a couple of extra weeks' pay in your packet. A couple of weeks? That seems fair enough to me. It might be all right to you, sunshine, but you're going to fob me off with a couple of weeks' wages. You must be out. Oh, hang on a minute. Oh, you're wasting your breath. Look, I'm warning you, G. There's a limit to my patience, and I'm getting very close to it right now. You and me both, mate. Have you found one, Elder? How about to send out for more stock? <laughs> no, I'll take this one. Life's a good life, does Eddie. Eddie Yates? Yeah, it's his birthday day after tomorrow. Hey, can never imagine him having a birthday. Always thought he was horrid. <laughs> well, that's uh, 55p, Hilda. How much? Well, I've got some cheaper if you think that's a bit steep. No, no, go on. By heck, they say you should never convert back to old money. I can see the reason why now. <laughs> hey, up, wanderers <laughs> return. <laughs> Sorry, we're late, It took longer than we thought. My fault, I'm afraid. I took her for a spot of lunch to celebrate. <laughs> celebrate? Do you think she's old enough to be told? Told what? Engagement ring. You mean you're engaged, you and him? That's right. We've just yes. been to choose the ring. Oh, just fancy. Well, it's true what they say, isn't it? Everything comes to them what waits. <laughs> well, I'd like to wish you both every happiness. Thanks very much, Mrs. Ogden. Yeah, well, I must dash. Uh, I've just remembered I've, uh, I've left the pan on. Be seeing you. Trial, Bye, Bye. Well, you've made her day, if now tells. Come on, let's have a look. <laughs> Maybe that's a Bobby Dazzler. The last time I saw out like that, it was revolving over at dance floor in Starlight Room. <laughs> hey, that's not where you got it, is it? <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> well, now it's official. I'd like to wish the pair of you every happiness. Oh. I'm very pleased for you. Both of you. Thanks Thank very you very much. much. Must say, Derek, you're a man of taste. Not me. Mavis chose the ring. Yes, but you chose Mavis, didn't you? Is that it? Hi, that's it. Any complaints about the service after tomorrow and you know where to take them? Ah, oh, Debbie. Right, first time. Is she looking forward to it? She is. Oh, what does that mean? Well, I don't mind admitting it's not the sort of job I would have chosen for her. Oh, she could have done a lot worse, you know. I mean, the pay is not bad if she's prepared to put the hours in. No, that's not what I mean. Oh? Well, it's hardly the first rung on the ladder to a promising career, is it? I agree. But it is a job. And that's summit these days, isn't it? Yeah, I know, but... But what? Well, uh, it's hardly the ideal place for an impressionable 16-year-old either, is it? I mean, some of the fellas you get in here, I mean, the language must be enough to make a Sergeant Major's hair curl. Well, it happens. But we learn to turn a deaf ear. Look, uh, your Debbie's not daft, you know. She knows perfectly well what she's letting herself in for. I made it quite clear to her. And she was still over the moon when I said she could start tomorrow. You don't know I saw her face when she came home. So stop worrying, eh? Anyway, I'll be here to keep an eye on her. Thanks. Drink your tea before it gets cold, eh? Yeah. Oh, darling. I told you you'd be back for you when I'd made my fortune, didn't well, I? Well, look what the cat's dragged in. Not seen much of you lately, have we? And how much did you want to oh, see you? Oh, do you mind? You put me customers off the food. Hungry as a wolf, as usual, I take it. You take it, right. I'll have double everything you can fry up. And I'll have you and a piece for pudding, eh? Well, one of these days, my husband is going to come in here while you're molesting me. And he's not going to like it. Not one little bit. Well, that's all right, isn't it? Because I'm not planning on doing it, eh? Do you want to fry up or don't you? 
Well, if it's your best offer. It's my only offer. Watch it. Well, you do surprise me. What? Made the rave the original wilting wallflower. Come on, Hilda, pull the other one. Look. I'm telling you, I've seen her engagement ring, haven't I? Ah, well, I'm very pleased. I said Derek's a nice fella. Yeah. Put out the air type, Mrs. Turpin. Oh, of course he isn't. Flash car, flash suits, it all tops your winter purse. He's not Miss Riley's type at all. One of her she sees in him, I'll never know. And they say women are catty. <laughs> That's right what he says, is he? He is entitled to a hefty payout. Oh, it depends what you mean by hefty, I suppose. Well, in Fred G's case, giving him up, I know he's going to be flaming torture. Well, I'm not clear on the details, but uh, I reckon he has got a case. Looks like you know, choice but to grin and bear it, I'm afraid. Tarkin, thank very much. That's really made my day, that has. What shall I say? Oh, you'll think of so much. Just go in and get it over with. Oh, would you like me to do it? Oh, would you, Derek? I'll be all right once they know. Hey, hey, talk of the devil. Oh, thanks uh, very much. Not you, mate. Give us a flash, mate. Pardon? The engagement oh, ring, love. Oh, did you? Oh, Mrs. Ogden told us, as a oh. matter of fact. Yeah, well, you never said it was a secret. Don't well, just think of all the money you've saved in paper adverts. Uh, <laughs> well, it's the big day, then, mate. Well, we haven't really talked about that yet, have we, Derek? Come on, give him a chance. You haven't paid for it ring yet. Oh. <laughs> well, come on, let's have a look. Oh. Oh, it's lovely, mate. Oh, it's lovely. Do you know, in this light, it looks almost genuine. It is genuine. Percy, are you sitting there for something? Me? No, why? You've never known to keep your mouth shut so long. <laughs> well, I've had no chance to open it, have I? Been like a parrot house in here since you lot came in. Oh. Any road, now I have got the floor, I'd just like to say how very pleased I am for you. Both of you. And he means it too, because he was only talking about you two just before you came in. Was that right? I was just saying, I hope you'd be very happy together. Yeah, that goes for all of us, mate. Oh, it's all the very best. Thank you very much. Well, if no one else will say it, I will. Betty, yeah. will you set them all up again? Yeah. I'll have a vodka and tonic. Yeah. Mavis will have a sherry. Derek will have... No, you don't. No, this is on me. I think I'll just have half a bitter to start with. I think I could be in for a long night. Oh. Ladies, no think about it, mate. We can guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the Nelson Hotel? Is Terry there? Tom. Hello? <coughs> Terry and Billy Walker. Ah, fine, mate, you? No. No, 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 I just phoned up for, for a bit of information. Yeah, listen, you're a mate of that bloke who runs a ship in Cleaver Street, aren't you? Yeah, well, he got rid of a cellar man a couple of months back, did I, yeah? Yeah. No! No! No, it's just that, well, we were having a conversation and one of the lads reckoned that you couldn't get rid of staff these days without paying an arm and a leg in compensation. Yeah, well, it just struck me that Harry didn't seem the type to take that, that's all. Well, how did he do it? Did he now? Well, you must have some idea when you're going to get married. I haven't really talked about it yet. And they can't get married in too much of a rush. do only set tongues wagging. I've only one word of advice to give you about marriage, mate. Don't. Oh. <laughs> I'm sure it's well meant. I still think I'm prepared to take the chance. Oh. Take the notice of him, Dennis. Derek. Oh. Derek. <laughs> Thank you, love. Marriage is like hotels. You only get out of it what you put into it. You've got to make the woman in your life know she's something special. Yeah. You're right. Well, don't let the wife find out. She'll throttle you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad to see something's cheered you up. You've had a face as long as a ship canal all day. Not without reason, Betty. Love, believe me. And we all know why, don't we? Look, Billy. Why don't you two try and bury the hatchet? Come to some agreement that'll make you both happy. Life's too short, love, to go around making all these enemies. I agree, Betty, love. That's why I offer the olive branch. Uh, and what did he do? Slung it right back in my face. Yeah, I heard. Still, I mean, he's never been the easiest of fellas to get on with, has he? There must be something you can do, love. Oh, there is, Betty. Don't you worry. If that's the way he wants to play it, that's fine by me, believe me. Lazy bones, come on, rise and shine, half seven. Morning, Dad. I'd have give you a shirt, but I thought, well, at your age. Morning. Pot warm, is it? I had orange juice. Is the orange juice warm, then? Sauce looks good. 
It's brown bread and peanut butter. Oh, well, never mind. I mean, you can have a piece, but I am going to need my strength today, Aunt. I reckon so. How did it strike you, Dad? You know, your very first day at work. <laughs> like a ton weight. No, it got me in the legs, didn't it? I had to have them rubbed down when I got home. <laughs> Charming. Do you know, I remember my first day at work at Weatherall's when I served me time. I was just stood there in the yard like with my hands in my pockets. And this roofer, right rough character, shouts across the yard, hey, Dozy, get your gloves off. Gloves, I thought, I'm not wearing any. <laughs> Thanks very much for wetting all the towels through. Listen, it leaves them soaked. <coughs> I like better than a wet towel. No. There's only one thing what beats a wet towel, and that's a wet bog roll. How crew can you get? Talk about transport coffees being rough. Is that peanut butter? Flaming, Nora. You know I can't stand peanut butter. I thought you put it on your tash. Hey, you two, stop niggling. You weren't niggle on your first day at work. I was niggled. Her and a daft mate of hers followed me, didn't they? Oh, has he got his little butty box? Well, look, you do your own toast. We've got the new rules on the go now, haven't we? No more of your male chauvinist nonsense. Get in that Jim's calf. There'll be plenty. Could have sworn I brought these cleaned up yesterday. I think he takes them back down there, deliberate, you know. Who does? The Phantom of the Opera. Billy the Flaming Kid there, expecting me. I'm going to have a heart attack or something. Oh, go on, Fred. That's right, Betty. Every time I go down that cell, I've got to be very, very careful in case he's been there with a saw, giving it the old Hitchcock touch. Oh, dear. Good morning, Betty, love. Morning, Billy, love. <clears throat> Break time already, is it? Near as damage. Have you paid for that ale? Uh, he's just testing it, love. Aren't you, Fred? Yeah, yeah. Testing it, see if it's wet. Oh, as you know. And, uh, that's your newspaper, is it? Eh? Are you going deaf as well as daft? I said, is that your newspaper? Mine? It's the one that comes through the flaming door, isn't it? Well, in that case, it isn't yours, so if you don't mind, whilst there's some print left... Oh, for Pete's sake, can't you two quit? It's gone on long enough. A joke is a joke. Who's joking? Oh, God, eh? The KGB did half of a signal when they discovered you were born British, mate. If the conditions don't suit, you know the answer, don't you? The offer's there on the table, a couple of weeks pay in lieu, and liar that I am, I'll throw in a reference. You can stick your reference and you can stick your money. If I get the elbow from here, I want the full whack, a grand at least, and that's in the book. Oh, look, I can't go on working in this atmosphere, Billy. I appreciate how you feel, Betty Love. I'm not enjoying it myself, but what can I do? He's trying to put the arm on me. Him and his brief, that comedian Duckworth, come in the Oracle. All oh, this taproom lawyer tripe, this tribunal nonsense. Well, I mean, he is entitled to something, lovey. I mean, after all the years he's been here. He is a pot man, Betty, which makes him, in my book, a casual labourer. Oh, I don't know. Well, I've made him a fair offer. He's just trying it on. Well, this time he's picked the wrong man. Well, if you want my opinion, I think that goes for both of you. Do you reckon? Oh, I'm not daft. I can see what you're aiming at. He's not going to put his coat on and walk through that door while he's losing brass. So I gather. And I'll tell you something that's on the cards as well. If you keep needling him, he's going to get his rag out. And then he's liable to lash out and land you on. You don't say. Which one is Mrs. Pierce? I could tell you. Stick them down there. He enjoyed being here, though. Well, I didn't think I was so busy, you know, like straight off. It comes in spasms like backache. Girl's very efficient, don't you think? Well, uh, She seems quite nice to talk to. Not that we have had much chance to talk. Never shows no interest in my lumbago. Debbie, love, table four's order. Shan't need any rocking tonight. I know this table needs to clear. They're not sure you have to make out a bill. Yeah, can I help you? Quite frankly, both Derek and myself feel it's a bit too soon to be naming the day. I mean, we have to get used to just being engaged first, don't oh, we? Oh, fair enough. But I'm a great believer in striking while the iron's hot. Oh, if you're shoeing a horse, possibly. Shoeing a horse, marrying a Derek, delay could be fatal. Morning, ladies. Morning. Morning. I'll come straight to the point. I'm uh, ballroom dancing tonight at Town Hall Annex. Uh, modern sequence, Latin America. Uh, I've got my paint and leathers all polished up. All I'm looking for now is a partner. Well, don't look at me. Well, I could go on the pickup, but I prefer to have a regular partner. If you don't mind me saying so, Miss Riley, you do have a dancing type figure. Oh, well, thank you very much, but I'm afraid I'm all booked. Hmm, how important? Mr. Something, if memory serves me right, you were in the Rovers when I announced my engagement. 
That's correct. And now you're asking me to go dancing with you. <laughs> Isn't that a little bit unconventional? Well, some folks might say so, but uh, to be honest, Miss Riley, I'm a bit desperate and uh, I'd not take you for a slave to convention. Well, slave or not, I'm afraid it's impossible, even if I wasn't engaged. Can I take it you're declining my invitation? Yes, I am declining it. Oh, <laughs> desperate indeed. What do you think my fiancé would say? Is he not a bohemian, then? Mr. Sugden, you've met him. I mean, does he look like a bohemian? Well, he doesn't look like Clark Gable, and I thought all your blokes are a bit bohemian-like. This is your past catching up with you, this. All them escapades on the moors, all them nude painters and trouserless decorators. Look, Mr. Sugden, if you really are desperate, I'm sure Rita would be very flattered. Uh, no, I haven't got a frock, you see. Oh, no, yeah. not for dancing. Oh, in. you have. No, you need one with a lot of sequins and yards of underskirts. No, you know. sequins are no problem. I can soon go out and buy you some. Excuse me. Morning, cabin. Who? Uh, listen, uh. Hang on, I'll see if she's in. It's for you. Oh, is it Derek? No, Victor. Well, I'll be honest with you, Betty. I speak as I find. Billy Walker's always been a perfect gent to me. Mm. Like tonight. Now, it's Dr Lowther's birthday, and Mrs Lowther's planned a very select little gathering. And she particularly wants me to help out with all the arrangements mm. and join in the toasts afterwards. Oh, yes, she said to me, she said, uh, there'll be a glass for you as well, Mrs Ogden. Mm -hmm. I mean, naturally, I wouldn't expect a place at the table, of course, but uh, there will be a glass. Mm -hmm. Do you mean to drink the doctor's health, like? Yeah, and then, of course, afterwards, she'll expect me to help with the clearing up and have a bit of a natter, like, well, mm -hmm. in her way. So I said to Billy, I said, uh, I might not be in in the morning, expecting ructions. Do you know he never turned a hair? He just said, no problem, Hilda. And don't worry about your money. You've got a day coming. I'll get Fred out there with the mop, he said. <laughs> Where's Hitler? Again upstairs, Jane. Oh, don't tell Percy Sugden he'll be round here with a gun and his gas mask. <laughs> By oh. the heck, where have you been up a chimney? He's got me out there in the yard, hasn't he? What's it whitewashing? Got me shifting the muck and scraping the walls. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Billy walking up there, he's hogging the bathroom. Get himself all ponced up, you can't move up there for aftershave. Mm. I'm here covered in muck. Oh, I don't know, it's a cruel world, Betty. Hey, if I were you, friend, I'd sort to of call it a draw. A draw? After the punishment I've been through, give over. <laughs> now, that would be giving him, wouldn't it? Well, I'd, I'd just put my coat on and go. I mean, you can still make a claim. Hey, hang on a minute. He's down to do my cleaning tomorrow. Down to do your what? The scrubbing. I've had a word with Billy. It's all arranged. Now then, girls, cut on, is it? <coughs> what are you doing, sat there? I'm having a breather. Having a breather? In the living room, in that state? Now, before you start, there's ornaments in here that are very valuable. Now, listen, Skywell, let's get a couple of things straight. You've got a room, you've got a share of the kitchen, the bathroom and the toilet. You work in the bar, you work in the yard, but mostly your place is the cellar. So finish your tea, wash your cup and get down there sharpish. And if you feel like taking a punch at something, try the wall. It won't hit back. Right, I'll open the doors. By the left. What do you reckon to Debbie then? Will she do? She's not scared of work, I'll give her that. I think she'll fit in very nicely. Hey, Barry Sheen! It's not made of iron, you it's know. It's a fleeing rip off. Hey, Baz, can we give you the magic touch light? Sorry about them. Come from broken homes. I blame society. Got it in one there, Mrs. Pierce. Victims, no danger. Kicked out of school and straight down a job centre. That's closing down, I've heard. Oh, well, as long as he bung me that gyro once a fortnight. I put in for a supplementary benefit. I mean, that bike of mine drinks petrol. Beans on toast, is it, Darren? Beans on toast, yeah. But, eh, uh, less of a Darren life. Come on, you get, Daz. Well, you go down a supermarket, right? I know, right? a nickname. Well, if you call Caroline, it's Daz. Darren, it's Daz. Hey, Daz. Hey, you, Debbie, what are you doing here? 
Okay, just started today. Well, where you been? Any road? Not seen you down a flat. We did a flip. You did a flip. And your old fella never dropped me a postcard. Yes, he would. Did you get down here a lot, like? Now and then. I come for the beans. Plus, I'm sweet on Mrs. Pierce. She hey. reckons I'm only after her pension. <laughs> hey, Daz, come and clock this. I've only got three lemons. I'll see you later, maybe. I'll show you how the tool works. It's a bit old for you, isn't it? What? When I'm bringing a wagon? To be honest, Jack, I can't see me lasting a day out. But you've got to stick in there, Fred. Yeah, but the strokes has been pulled and it's more than flesh and blood can stand. No, but you've got to ride it. Look, if I do, Jack, Jack it in, you know. Is there any chance of a couple of nights kip at your place? Oh, well, if you fancy the call, though, yeah. Oh, thanks very much. Look, all I'm trying to say is, don't chicken out. It's, it, this is just like the first round, innit? If you've got a full distance, you can be on a big draw here. Shift yourself. Get weaving on them mucky pots. Stood here chattering like a flaming old woman. Ooh. Fred, hang on, hang on till weekend, you'll have him over a barrel. If he carries on with these insults, mate, I'm telling you, believe me, this will be a two grand job at the death. You reckon? I reckon. <laughs> Is Mavis ready yet? She's just nipped upstairs for a pogo stick. A what? A pogo stick never goes to park without a pogo stick. You don't mean a skateboard, do you? She told me she was into skateboarding. <laughs> anyway, the thing is, I've got to pick up a suit from the dry cleaners, the one just across the Chinese place. London place, lady on Friday. Uh, so I'll just be a sec. Right. Did I hear Derek? Well, let's say you heard one of the men in your life. Oh, don't start that. It was Derek, wasn't it? Yes, it was Derek. It'll be back in a tick. But supposing it had been Victor. Oh, it's Derek and Victor now, is it? Oh, all morning it's been the chocolate tycoon and the saddle with sage. All right, less of the sarcasm, madam. It's all right you swanning off for a snogging session in the park. Supposing it had been Victor, where am I supposed to tell him? Well, tell him the truth. Tell him I'm engaged to be married. Well, why didn't you tell him when he had him on the blower? Instead of dithering and acting the dope. Tell him I'm not him. I don't talk like that. One of these days I'll record you when you've been thoroughly mardy. And what about Derek? What's he going to say if he finds out about these wild nights on the moors? Well, I suppose he's had his flings. Where's he gone, anyway? China, for his flings. Oh. Well, you've heard the song, haven't you? Just one of those flings. I suppose you mean the Chinese lawn Yes. Thing. Yes, he said he had a suit to pick up. Well, I think I'll pop across and meet him, getting no sense out of you. Oh, you know, I should imagine that all Victor wanted was to know if I was going to enrol for night school this autumn. And are you? <laughs> Of course not. Any more than I'm going dancing with Percy Sugden, for heaven's sake. Yes. But you haven't shared a sleeping bag with Percy Sugden, have you? At least I hope you Oh, you're impossible. Hey, think on, madam. Watch yourself in that park. Don't go sitting on damp grass. Oh. Hey, Debbie! You want to go? Mind. Yeah, then. I don't know, I might get into trouble. The old fella's got spies out like, has he? No, oh, he hasn't. I've just had my dinner break. Your in charge might get a bit funny. And that Gail, she's as soft as a brush. She calls you evil can evil. <laughs> That's when she's in a bad mood. Normally she calls us old Barry Sheen, even the girls. What happens at 350? Wanted something they could do over the ton. Pause her. Hey, I tell you, I should see a corner. Go on. Do the business. You've done it before. Go on. First you cut me to tittle the yard up, and now you've changed your mind. You want the cellar doing? 
That's just par for the course, isn't it? I thought I might be mucking you about a bit, you know. Mucking me about? What, put that in your noddle? No. I'll be down there with the sand boys, laughing, whistling. Uh, only some fellas couldn't take it, like fellas with any bottle. They do, they're not. They feel compelled to put that bucket of whitewash over me head. Now, you always get a few hot heads, don't you? Oh, well, if you feel like taking a swing, park your bucket. Oh, no. Oh, no, no. I'm not buying that one. Oh, you're dying to belt me. Come on. I'll hold your brush. I'm not buying it, Billy. I've too much at stake, haven't I? My job, my digs. Compensation. Don't fight it. Go on, you want to decorate me features with a wallop. Feel free. Ah, oh, you're puddled, you are. Yeah, that's right. I'm on the brink of insanity. And who wouldn't be with a burke like you on his back? Come on, stick one on me. Where's my witnesses? I'm almost like giving you an order. I'll tell you what I'll do. Hey? You stick one on me. Then I've really got a case. Oh, you windy. Crafty Herbert. She's gone where? With who? To the park for a picnic with Derek, her intended. Her what? Could you please repeat that very slowly? The young man she's affianced to. Now, do you want it in Morse code or semaphore? Are you trying to tell me that Mavis is engaged to be married? That's about the size of it, yes. It's unbelievable. I, I can't take it in. Oh, suit yourself, or if there were a stack of Bibles here, my hands would be on them. But she's never said a word. Well, you haven't seen her these past months. Anyway, it was a whirlwind romance. Well, does this mean that she won't be to loose end like at bank holiday? What do you think? Well, I think she's let me down, that's what I think. Yes, definitely. I mean, I'm, I'm sure I told her that I planned to see her, but she knows night classes are starting. Well, this is the life when you move in fast company. This is urban life, the corruption of urban life. If only she'd come to Saddleworth, hadn't been such a, a conformist. I suppose this bloke's some sort of shark, is he? Well, he's a big fish in sweets and tobacco. Mind you, he drives a BMW. God, this is intolerable. Somebody must talk to her. Hey! You can't come rushing down from the haunts of Coot and Hearn, laying down the law. Haunts of Coot and Hearn? Saddleworth, the Moors, it's from a nature poem. I come from the haunts of Coot and Hearn. The only Coot I know in Saddleworth is a very old Coot with a bald head who keeps querying my expenses. Oh. And as for Hearn, well, there's a car park attendant at Saddleworth Civic Offices called Ernie. Please tell Mavis that I called and tell her I shall be in touch. Well, you'd be pleased to know, I've done a salad for us. Mm. Hey, that dreaded word, salad. Hey, sit down, tuck in and shut up. I'm starving. Last time you did a salad, there was drugs and lettuce. You can't be hungry. Spent a fortune this dinner time. Yeah, ordered up dinner, thinking I might be on freebies. No, oh, too busy crawling. You soon shut off when that girl told you. I was within my rights and I never left till I was ready. <laughs> I was going to come down, but I got stuck on this chimney. It's great, this, Dad, but you forgot bread. Oh, crikey, I knew there was some... Hey, Skyver, do some bread, will you? Can she do it? No, she can't. And she isn't doing the washing up, either. I thought you'd be earlier. Yeah, well, I could have been. But I said to myself, I'll not be a clock watch. Ah, uh -huh. sweet. Wally. Mm -hmm. What's up with you? Dad. It's all this washing up. It's doing things to my personality. Making me want to snitch on folk, tell tales, go all gearless, wear me hair in pigtails. All right, you clown, I'll do the washing up. Hey, useless, couldn't you put some butter on this? Oh. It says here that over 70,000 folk came off motorbikes in the United Kingdom in one year alone. I think it's kids, mostly. It should be stopped, it should be banned. Think what that puts on the rates. Well, I don't blame the kids and I don't blame the bikes. I blame society. <laughs> Who's she? Her. She's an eccentric millionaire. She once danced the rumba with Fred Astaire when he was staying with her in her villa in Monte Carlo. Hey, if you want a dancing partner, you're away. <laughs> I should have thought you'd have had a black eye now. Did you? I hope you're not still baiting Fred. Me baiting him, it's all my fault. What's he doing to me? He's bleeding me white, Betty. Are you still going to fire him? Oh, all this fuss. What do I care who works here? <laughs> telling you, Jacko, he's got me groggy. One more insult, I'll, I'll stick one right on him, I'm telling you. Look, you, you're winning. He's thrown all his big punches. All you've got to do is hang on for one more day. You've got him cold, you've got him snookered. 
Just look, what a finger. I've a good night to go over there and give him one. Cut that out, will you? Look, when you pick up your prize money, that's when you can smack him. Hang on, let me move on here. I think this is where I get barred, I reckon. Plate cool, Fred, lad. All right, I'm armor plated, aren't I? Go, oh, Billy. Hello, Jack. Still making the bullets. Happy in your work, are you, Fred? Just say that again, Walker. Say that again. Oh, God! Hey. <laughs> Have you blown it? In space. Thanks a bunch. Very considerate of you, lover. Well, I should just think it is. Is it all down to Fred? Fred? Yeah. It was Billy Walker himself what guaranteed me the day off. Ah, yeah. But Billy, he was banking on getting Fred to clean in place of you, you see. Yeah, I know. Yes, well, it's all part of Billy's plan to rile Fred. He's been at it for days trying to get him to do something stupid so I could just sack him. Oh, I see. I was a prawn, was I? Hey? In his game. So you see him in Fred's gone. Last night? Go. You don't mean. No, I mean that Billy was successful. Fred was so cheesed off with whitewashing that backyard. He socked him. He never. Yeah. So Billy sacked him. No. Yeah. So of course Fred packed his bag and went, and not a soul knows where to. <laughs> oh, and there was me sat at home watching a black and white repeat. Ah, yeah. oh, good. I'm glad you could make it, Hilda. Oh, you might be, I'm not. I have my hard-earned bank holiday rest all worked out. Oh, never mind about that. Get your bucket filled and let's hear that mop slapping about. Unless you want to get your cards and all. Oh, whatever happened to the age of chivalry, eh, Betty? Hey, do what, love? Well, that worked out all right, didn't it, Betty? I wish you'd have gone for it yourself, though. You know, today is the first day for ages I've actually felt good about having to work here. Bruises or no bruises? Oh, I feel as if a great weight has been lifted off my shoulders. A great, bold, fat, specky, four-eyed weight. I'm optimistic, that's the word, Betty. Right, well, you better get cracking on this. It's hmm? a list of what wants bringing up from the cellar. Yeah. Oh, hey, while you're down there, the mild needs a new barrel. Oh, and uh, check the pressure of the lager. It was coming out like foam from a fire extinguisher. <laughs> Must be sick, though, Debbie. I haven't to work on bank holiday. No way. I would be. Ah, come, especially it's something you don't like doing, I know. Gets me out of doing it here, do not it? Gets me lumbered, though, does not it? Hey, is it ready yet? Probably. Well, dish it up, then. <laughs> it's all welded together, like. We'll bring the pan over to the table, stick it down in the middle, and we'll all fish for it. Thank you. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Look at that. It's amazing what you can do when you really try, isn't it? Is that what you call trying? Well, what are you doing today, Kev? Gonna bung a few bits on my rover. Brian's yeah. giving me the keys. You're working an all, are you? You want to get yourself up to Eaton Park, have a game of pitch and put, or over to Southport and get on the Mad Mouse. Change your scenery, something different. What are you doing then, Dad? Me? Well, I'm not going down the yard, that's for certain. No, I'll probably mooch about here for a bit. Read the papers for the change, and then uh, creep round the rovers, have a couple of jars. Carefully don't die of excitement. <laughs> <laughs> then I thought I'd, uh, I thought I'd come round the cafe and have a look at you. When? Dinner time, unless you're close for dinner. <laughs> ha ha, come in spying on me, are you? No, I'm not. I just want to get a picture of you working. Plus, we've got no in, and plus, it'll help your day go by. Well, I'm only doing an half day, though. Well, <clears throat> your morning, then. Hey, chuck us them cereal bowls, Kev. I'll put them into soap before I launch on that. Because it does issue, isn't it? Shut your gob. Well, it is. That's why you don't want him there, isn't it? Can't stop him, can I? Or smoke. Hey, Riley, you coming down today or what? I thought I was on holiday today. Don't need me for anything, do you? Yes. 
I need you to tell me the next gripping instalment and the maybe some Derek romance. <laughs> Suspense is killing me. Oh, well, we had quite a time last night, Rita. We really did. Hey, what have you been getting up to? <laughs> well, first of all, we went to feed the ducks on Flatsfield Pond. Wow. Oh. Then what? Well, that led to a very amusing discussion. What about? About ducks. You see, I pointed out to Derek how tubby they all looked. Well, Derek came up with this theory that whereas the number of duck ponds and therefore ducks has dwindled, which it has, the number of people actually wanting to feed them obviously hasn't. Fascinating. Mm. And then what? Did he go to a club, dinner dance? No. Then we decided we're definitely going to throw an engagement party. Hey, now you're talking. <laughs> Are you going to boot banqueting suite at Midland Hotel? No, we thought here would be best. Here? Yeah. There's only room for half a dozen. Well, we, th we thought about eight. Eight? You can't have a decent squabble with eight. Look, Rita, it's me that's getting engaged, you know. And however much it might pique you, I'm not like you. I like to do things in a much more... Half-hearted. Quiet fashions are there. Oh, all right, I've eight, see if I can. You're not inviting Victor? Victor? Oh, Rita, I'm trying to put him out of my mind. Sorry. He hasn't phoned again, has he? No. Oh, thank goodness for that. He's been round. Been round? Last night. Now, don't panic. I've put him in the picture. He knows you're engaged. <gasps> what did he say? He said he'd drop in during day today. He didn't? He did. Fellas. They like buses, aren't they? Keep you waiting for ages, then they all turn up at once. Right. All right, Betty, I think that's a lot now. No, I'm still waiting for juices, love. 98p, Al. Thanks, love. Oh, thank you. All right. Is it OK if I leave it for a couple of minutes? There's people waiting, though. <laughs> Mr Walker. Would this be the wrong moment to ask a little question on a professional matter? Ask away. Anything's better than them cellar steps. OK, what have you done to your ale? I've just put a fresh barrel on. Why? Only I've been supping Newton and Ridley's ale for most of my life, and if there was one thing Fred G were good for, and he weren't good for much, you know how to keep his ale. What's this? A complaint? Oh, no, nothing as drastic as that, but uh, just to say, as a connoisseur, that glass that I've just drunk was showing minute signs of impending deterioration. Deterioration? He only left last night. Hmm. Well, I've said my piece. Uh, I'll be off now. I've got a ravenous budgie waiting for his dinner. <laughs> tweet, tweet, tweet. Cheers, Billy. <laughs> now, nudge. Nudge it now. Trust me, Terry. Trust me. It's the Watts uncertainty principle. Named after Eisenberg. I worked it out on my talking calculator last night. Now, 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 stop! Stop on a verge of three plums! You forsake a paltry win on your three plums in order to win the Bonanza bumper, don't you? Now, play again. Five, two, three. Better add, because this is my last time ten. Play it again! Eyes and pretty good. Oh, hiya, lads. Hiya, Mr right. Webster. Where's your Kev? Thinking about with his robot, I think. Have you done? Yeah, it's totally skint me, love. My turn next. What did I tell you? That's the stuff to give them. Curly, remind me to ignore you in the future. Will you be dining, sir? Oh, yes. You don't have luck smashing in your mouth, I like it. Can you restrict your attention to the menu, sir? All right, uh, shepherd's pie, please. Uh, tea, bread and butter. Shepherd's pie, tea, bread and butter. All right. Are you two having out? Have a heart, and Debbie. We're awash. You've already made us our full cups of tea. This is a commercial enterprise, you know. These tables are reserved for people what's dining. If you're not dining, get lost and make room for them with credit Come cards. Come on, Curly. <laughs> Come on, where? Somewhere else. See ya. See ya. Good afternoon. Good Mr. Oh, thanks, girl. How's she getting on? Fine. Mind you, she's a bit bossy. Yes, I've noticed. Oh, that were nothing. She told one fella he couldn't have two pies because he were fat enough all. She did. Hey, Dad. Daz, flipping it. Fancy seeing you here. What are you on about? I said I'm. Dad's over there, Lunkhead. Well, fancy seeing you, Debbie. How do you, Mr. Webster? Feel like home from home for you and here now, eh? Something like that. I thought your Debbie was still at school, did you? And there's your bread and butter, sir. Hey, what have I told you about him? 
brave, Dad. No going out with him and no going on the back of his motorbike. Give us a break. He's going out with that till girl at Asta. I still fancy me being with you. Which you don't. Do I not? It's last year's model, isn't it? And get your elbows off the table, sir. It creates a bad impression. Can you come and have a word with me, Rita? Oh, can't you come down here and have a word? Oh, it's just every time that shop door goes, I keep thinking, is it Derek? Is it Victor? Is it both? I mean, that's the worst of all, thinking that they might both come in at the same time. You are in a tizzy, aren't you? Well, it's a bit of a mess, isn't it? Nothing that a bit of straight talking can't sort out. It's hardly my forte, Rita. No, but if you're marrying Derek Wilton and I advise you to start practising. What am I going to say to a Victor? I mean... He might be hurt or angry. He might come in demanding an explanation. Well, you tell him the truth, don't you? You say you've met somebody you like very much, somebody that cares for you in a special way, somebody you think you can spend the rest of your life with. Surprise, surprise. Oh! Uh, What's wrong? No, nothing. <laughs> nothing at all. I just thought that you were gardening all afternoon, Derek. Well, I was, but I thought, hang it, why not drive over and see how Mavis is getting on with the list of invitations? Shall we go up? Uh, no, no, let's go and have a nice drink first, a shall drink? we? A drink? At lunchtime? Oh, well, yes, why not? Well, why not indeed, oh. but uh, don't you want to show me the list? No, no I've, I've, I'm really extremely thirsty. Rita, shop! Well, then, lead on, Mavis. You. See you in a while, Rita. Hey, nice. when you're young and in love, eh? Yeah. How's your bank holiday? I'm just on a big feed next door in the cafe. I believe Gail's taking your Debbie on. I'll give you the month's rent. Smash it. Aye, it's, uh, it's not the sort of job I'd have chosen for her. Well, you can't be choosy these days, can you? Well, as long as she keeps out of mischief, eh? Fellas, you mean? Well, she's only 16, you know, easy prey. You're Debbie? Tell you what, I wouldn't like to be a fella at tried out on with her. Must be giving warning. He's on prowl, I reckon. Lock up your women folk job. No, no, I don't think he is. Well, he must be advertising then. Randy, you little devil! Where are you? Randy? Randy? Randy, that's his budgie. Randy! Where are you? Randy? You lost your budgie, Mr. Sugden? Ah, silly chump I am. I let him out for his after dinner fly around room and then forgot all about him. An open wind, he was out like a little bullet he were. I think he landed up yonder in your guttering, young Terry. Oh, aye. Your guttering? Let's help him, Terry. Oh, you must be joking. Come on, it's so much to do, isn't it? I'll go and borrow Stan Ogden's ladder, Mr Sugden. Good idea, lad. Randy! No, you see, t'other birds will attack him, you see. They'll peck him to death. They're jealous of him. Of his bright colours. Still there, are you? Mm. I can't seem to get my nose out of this for some reason. Get your feet down. Now, what do you know about our Debbie and Dallin Isherwood? Baz. She's been out with him, hasn't she? Now I'm talking about yesterday, today, now. Well? He said he's been in a calf. Well, why the flaming heck didn't you tell me straight away? So you what? Zillions of people go in a cat. Don't act dim, Kevin. You know what I feel about him and our Debbie. What's happened, for God's sake? I've just seen her on the back of his flaming motorbike again. He's probably giving her a lift somewhere. Giving her a lift where? I don't know. Hang on, listen. It makes me sick, it really does, right after she's told me he's going out with somebody else. Oh, he's not as bad as you paint him, Dad. I don't care if he's Malcolm Flaming Muggeridge. He's riding about with our Debbie on the back of his 500cc death trap, oh, isn't he? Aren't you being a bit old-fashioned? Well, I'd rather be that. But I'd rather be that than shoving her around in a wheelchair. Where are you going? Getting a beer from the cupboard. 
I know what I'm talking about, Kev. I do. I've had experience on motorbikes. Big idiot greaser I was. Tear arsing around, I know. One little skid, that's all it takes. One little skid and you're scarred for life. That's what I'm talking about. Scarred for life. Yeah, I know. But it's worse than that, isn't it? It's worse than Daz Isherwood and his flaming motorbike. A little devil's a liar and all. It's unlucky she's scared of you, Dad. She will be when I see her. Hold this, Jack, will you? Bearing in mind how you find up there belonging me. Oh, well, you're welcome to this. What is it? It's a dead pigeon. I hope it's not a bad omen. By heck, it's Samantha, the one that's never come back when we had that race with Fred. Hey, Curly Bonds, if Randy don't turn up, you can buy Samantha for a fiver. What for? Barely. Stuff it, nail it to the perch, save your fortune in millet. Very sensitive, I must say. I've got this gate, gentlemen. I've never walked about with it, call him, make him feel homesick. Randy, come back to your nice cage with your wobbling man, your ladder and your bell. What's the matter, Mr. Sugden? I've lost my little Randy. Oh, poor Mr. Sugden, you must be heartbroken. I've lost my best friend, maybe. Oh, my condolences. I've uh, seen less grieving at a burying. Yes, you, you wouldn't bring your Harriet in a cage, would you? She might just seduce him back into captivity, like. Oh, well... Uh, we have got a lot of things to do, Mr. Sugden. Come on, Mavis. Sorry. That's right, walk away. I'm all flaming right, Jack. Wondering about yelling Randy doesn't look all right to me. Well, what am I supposed to do? I love that budgie. I can't leave him to a fate worse than death, can I? Randy, come home to Daddy, please. <laughs> Nothing's wrong, is it, Mavis? No, why? Well, you just seem a bit strange, that's all. <coughs> is it Mr Sugden's budgie? <coughs> well, I sincerely hope it's not me. Not you what? Well, they got you in this funny mood. Oh. Congratulations, Mavis. Oh. Derek. Uh, Derek. Yes. Thank you very much. When is the, um, the happy day to be? Well, we're not quite sure yet, are we, Derek? No, we shall be discussing it forthwith. Oh, well, let me know when it says you know I shall be there with my confetti. All oh, right, you are, Mr Roberts. I mean... You haven't been thinking of having second thoughts, have you? I don't know what you're talking about. This mood. I mean, it is very unlike you, all this lunchtime drinking. Oh, well, let's go back to the shop, no, then. Mavis, Mavis, I didn't mean to... Oh. Fifteen seconds to go. Not your doubt, have you, has it? No. Just fancy a bit of a sit-down, that's all. More graft than you thought, then, eh? Where did you get to just now? Oh, Percy's budgie's just on a runner. Really? I don't blame it. I'll have a pint of it, please. No, you won't. Glasses, please. Sorry, mate. What do you mean, I'm sorry? I'm stood here talking to you, Billy, with, with my money out. Betty. Billy? Sorry, Jack. Yeah, that were nasty, Betty. Very nasty. Reward two pound for information leading to recovery of green and yellow budgie. Answers to name of Randy. Well, little do I suppose, though it makes him sound more like a lost umbrella than a living creature. It's best to keep it simple. Mm. Oh, hello, hello, Rita, Mr. Sugden. Still no sign. Pardon? Randy. Oh, I'm sorry, but I'm sure he'll turn up sooner or later. Mm. Come on, Derek. It's a feeling of helplessness, you know. Now to do, but wait. Must be terrible. Uh, Derek. Yes. Uh, coming. I suppose they think they've got more important things to be bothered about. Well, they're only young. Mm. Oh, Mrs Ogden, you haven't seen anything of a green and yellow budgie on your travels, have you? No, not a blue one, neither. Oh, well. Where does he think we are, the middle of the jungle or something? <laughs> <laughs> Here. You know that fella Mavis used to bother with? Derek still does. She's engaged no, to him. No, no, the other one. Victor? Mm hmm Does she know he's hanging about outside? What, now? Mm. Pretended to be looking in a shop window when I come past. But I said to myself, aye, aye, and what's your game? Oh, hello. Rita, Mrs Ogden. Well, you plucked up courage to come in, then? Well, I was in the vicinity. Thought I'd call. Well, uh, maybe she's upstairs with Derek. You know, I thought I saw them as I arrived. So that's the famous Derek, is it? That's Derek, all right. 
Well, I won't disturb them. Uh, do you know when Mavis will be free later? No, I don't, love. Uh, shall I slip up and ask? No, 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 thanks. I've, I've got some business to attend to. I'll, I'll call back later if that's convenient. I'll tell her. Oh, thank you. Well, I'll, uh, I'll say goodbye then. Right. Ta Bye. 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 Oh, would you credit it? I thought we'd seen the last of them sort of tricks when Elsie Tammer left. Hi, Dad. Ah, oh, so there you are. Yeah, I'm sorry I'm late, but I had to help Gail get ready for tomorrow. Oh, and that took three hours, did it? Come on, Debbie. Tell me the truth. All right, then. I went round to Wendy's to listen to Ultravox album. Where's Kev? Then why didn't you tell me that when you first came in? Because you don't like me listening to pop music, do you? Shall I make us a brew? It's because you're a little blinking liar, isn't it? You've been out with that lad on his motorbike again. I have not. You know you have, love. I know now to sort. Well, I know you have, cos I saw you. Saw so what, anyway? So you lied to me. You told me it was all over between you and him. You lied, Debbie. You did just now and all. Can you blame me? Look at you now, you're not truth. That is the truth, is it? I like him and he likes me. And that's the end of it. It flaming well is not, you know. It's a free country. When you're 18. Until then, I'm responsible for you. Great. When my mum dies, you were giving me all kinds of responsibilities then. Now it suits you. You want them all back again. Hey, where are you going? Out. Oh, no, you're not. You're going to stay here and listen. I'll do what I like, Dad. No, you won't. This time, you'll do as you're told. You'll quit down in Isherwood, or you'll come out of that cafe and you're going back to school. I hate you. Would you like to sit down? Oh, thank you. Thank you. I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't really. Well, neither do I. After all, it's your life. You're free to do what you want with it. Oh, thank you. As long as you're aware of the trap you might be falling into. But if you're talking about me marrying Derek, then I'm not falling into a trap, thank you very much. Not one consciously set, Mavis, no, but a trap just the same. And naturally, I feel responsible. Well, there's no need. I once made you an offer to come and share my life in Saddleworth. An offer you saw fit to spurn. I didn't spurn it, Victor. Never spurned anything in my life. And now, not 12 months later, here you are engaged. Well, you can't call that a coincidence, can you? think I'm on the rebound, is that it? Well, it's not a phrase I would have chosen, well, no, let but... let me tell you, Victor, that I'm not. And if that's all you've come to say, then you might as well have saved yourself a journey. Right, fine. Well, I'll... I'll say goodbye, then. Well, goodbye. You obviously think you're going to be happy. Yes, I do. But this Derek will make you happy where I couldn't. Oh. It, it's not that you... Couldn't fit, no. Well then, Mavis. I mean, it's just the way things have turned out. But nothing's irrevocable, Mavis. We're all masters of our own fates. Oh, granted. Look, I came to see you wondering whether you might have changed, whether I wouldn't know you anymore. Well? Well, you haven't. And I feel we still do know one another so well that... for me to stay here any longer might be unwise. We must take time to think, Mavis. To think? I'll go now, but I shan't be far away. Not far away at all. Sandy Randy, have you this morning? No. I got up early to listen to the Dawn Chorus, especially just in case I might be able to identify his very individual chief. Is that right? I'm offering a reward, you know, two pounds for his safe return, so it could pay to keep your eyes open. Look, mate, if I do see a flaming budgie, I'll point it out to a cat because that's the way I flaming well feel this morning. All right. Bird eater! Randy! Oh, Randy. Well, I, I suppose he was 
quite casual in a way. I mean, it, it took a very sophisticated attitude, on the surface, anyway. Mavis, what exactly did Victor say? Well, that it was my life and I was perfectly at liberty to do what I wanted with it, even to making a mistake. So you think it's getting wed to Derek's going to be a mistake? Well, that's what I mean by being on the surface. I mean, one minute he was saying it was none of his business and the next he, he was warning me of the dangers of marrying on the rebound. On the rebound from whom? Well, himself, I suppose. Well, it's over a year since he asked you to go and live over at Brush with him and you turned him down. He asked me to be his life's partner, Rita, not to go and live over the Brush with him. Sorry. Oh, and then there were his eyes. What's the matter with his eyes? Well, he just looked hurt, deeply hurt. Mavis, are you sure you're not imagining all this? I mean, I can see Victor looking hurt if you tripped over a temp peg and ripped his fly sheet. Or if you cracked some of his pottery. But emotionally wounded. I mean, that's what you're saying, isn't it? Yes, I am. Well, well, well. Swains to the left of you, swains to the right. You can't move a fella's plight in the troll. Victor did not plight his troll. No, but if he's hurt. Now, what do you mean? Well, a wounded Victor lurking in the bulrushes. Hello, Mavis. Hello, oh, Derek. And Rita, of course. <laughs> Ever the bridesmaid, that's me. <laughs> there. Booze for the party tonight. Oh. Well, Derry, you shouldn't have. I was going to get that. I've got it trade. It's amazing the money you can save if you know the right people. I hardly pay the full price for anything. Really? Should I take it up for you? Yes, please. I'm not sure I should let you two keep being up there in that flat on your own. Wouldn't be allowed in a Catholic country. Oh, we're positive pillars of rectitude, aren't we, Mavis? Yes, we are. Mavis, what? Won't you tell him about Victor? Right. Now, where shall I put it? Oh, I think uh, on the breakfast bar for now. Ah, there we are. I think I've got it all. Uh, whiskey, gin, sherry, beer, mixers. Oh, port? No. Who drinks port? Well, I think Betty Turpin likes a glass, but she'll have something else, I'm sure. She shall have port, if that's what she wants. <laughs> Hang the expense. I'll get a bottle somewhere. Oh, you're in a very good mood today. And why not? I'm telling the world I'm engaged tonight. Doesn't our world know already? They might know it, but tonight they'll see it. Ritual is all, Mavis. The starch in the fabric of society. Huh. You're happy too, aren't you? Oh, yes, of course I am. <laughs> wonder what Rita meant about us being alone up here. <laughs> I wonder. So, one bottle of port still to come. There you are. Oh, that's, that's great. Do you know, this is the first bite I've had to eat today, and I've been to Manchester Airport and back twice. Really? Yeah. The wife doesn't cook for us now, you know. She just says, open the cupboard door and see what falls out. I am sorry. Yeah, I can remember when she looked just like you. Young and innocent and pleasant instead of... Ah, well, enough said. I just wonder what changed me. I wonder. Cheek on some men. Mm -hmm. Mr. Duckworth. He obviously thinks his wife's to blame for everything. He can't see that he's got any faults. Oh, well, well, that's not unusual. Women can be just as guilty of it as men. I can't be guilty of it, though, can I? You? Because Darren definitely doesn't have any faults, does he? Oh, wreck. I thought we were going to get to a morning without mentioning his name. Yeah, well, I've got to mention it to somebody. And I can't mention it at home except under my breath and second I wake up in the morning. Which I do. So, what's Divine Darren been doing to blot his copybook this time? Nothing. He hasn't done anything. That's what's so unfair. My dad saw me on his motorbike yesterday. Oh, dear. He says I have to finish with him. Oh, he'd be worried about you, Debbie. Any father would be riding about on the back of one of them things. You ever know a lad with a bike? Yeah, I married him. <laughs> <laughs> I still think the death traps, though. What do you think of Darren? I think he's a very nice lad. Only nice? He's fantastic. I just wish my dad thought so. Well, he won't, will he, while you keep rhyming with him about Darren? Don't make such an issue of it. I know you think it is, but it's not that important yet. Honest. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late, love. I've been helping Mrs. Riddell. Who's 
Mrs. Ridhouse when she's at home? She's my friend. We go sequence dancing together. She found a budgie in a porch this morning. I've been helping her catch it. Did you get it? Yeah, pull a cold wind over and then we put it in her shoebox. Hey, it's a lovely little thing. I think she's going to keep it. Might be Percy Sugden's. You are? You know, Percy Sugden, caretaker, community centre, little fella, know all. He lost the budgie. What colour is it then? What a flaming hell do I know? I'm not a personal friend of Percy's budgie. Well, this is green and yellow. Ah, well, if it is Percy, it's better off stopping where it is, cos I reckon he didn't lose it. I reckon the poor little sod's done a run of myself. Can I have a couple of rounds of bread and butter? Can I have two rounds of bread and butter, please? Have you had any reports of Randy being seen? Not a one. Perhaps he's gone back home, Percy. Well, he definitely wasn't there when I came out just now. His cage was still empty. His little bell still silent. A very sad sight. You know, that place isn't home without Randy. When I said home, Perth, I meant Australia. Forget it. Oh, Billy, is it all right if I sell Derek a bottle of port? Oh, of course it is. I'll get it. OK. Maybe it's driven you to the drink already, Mr. Derek. It's for our engagement party tonight. Oh. Actually, it's specially for you, Betty. I'm told you drink nothing else. Oh, well, thanks very much. I do like a drop of Thank port. Thank you. Um, who else will be there tonight? Well, I think you'll know everybody. Oh, yes. Uh, except perhaps my sister, my sister Edith. Oh, is she married? <laughs> no, not Edith. Oh. <laughs> I'll see you later. Yeah, to all of you. I'm off, Betty. OK, though. Oh, Mr. Wilson. Uh, I, yeah, I couldn't help overhearing what you said just now about your engagement party tonight. Oh? Oh, I think it's lovely you and Mavis getting together at last. Do you? Oh, yes. Well, it just goes to prove you can teach an old dog new tricks, doesn't it? Well, I mean, uh, you and Ed will both have a few to learn, won't you? <laughs> no, you see, I've always been a very good friend of Mavis, and uh, I can't understand why she's never mentioned the cards. <laughs> Hey, wonders never cease. You haven't actually managed to get the dinner ready, have you? Not me. Ah, uh, Deb. Debbie? Isn't she working? Yeah, but she phoned me up. She's bringing home sausage and chips for dinner. Can't be bad, eh? What's going into work, then? It's me! Ask her yourself. Have you want plates off? Don't be flipping stupid. You don't warm the plates in summer. Well, you would know, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. Sir. Could have done with some mushy peas. Oh! Hang on a minute, I'll get him out at fridge and jump up and down on him. Mm. Is it all right, Dad? Fine. Well, it's better than having to make something, isn't it? And seeing as though I work in a cafe... I'm not complaining. He wants to know what's brought this on all of a sudden, though, don't you, Dad? I mean, this morning you weren't even speaking to us. Unless you've packed in Barry Sheen and become a good little girl again. Kevin! Well, you said she had to. I was packing a job at the cafe, didn't you? Have you finished with him? No. I see. So all this is uh, just to button me up, is that it? I'm just being nice. Why can't you? Cos what you mean by me being nice is you getting your own way, am I right? You're just dead against Darren and that's it. All he is to you is a blooming motorbike. You're dead right, I am. He's a flaming menace. Well, I like him. Everybody likes him but you and him. And Gail likes him. She said so this morning. And she said I'd be daft to finish with him just because... And I'm not going to finish with him. There must be other lads. I like Darren. I love him. She'll get fed up with him. You see if she doesn't. She's another lad, you know. Yeah, but every time she goes out on this flaming motorcycle, she could be killed. Why can't she see the danger? Because it doesn't seem dangerous to her. Are you going to eat your dinner? No, I'm not hungry. Can I have your tips? Yeah. Can you give him money? Yes, gentlemen. Well, you your shout, Dad, just for a change, you know. Oh, don't be daft. If I got a drink, I'd get Nick for vagrancy when I got outside this pub. Sorry, Curly, mate. Why me? Because you're there, aren't you? Three pints, please, Ben. Thank you very much for making your minds up. <laughs> How are you doing? Mr. Sugden, would you like a drink? You might as well. No, thanks, son. I just haven't the heart to drink anymore. Oh, you have to take it you've not found Randy, then? No sign of him. And I've offered a reward, you know. How much? Two pounds. What's wrong with offering a reward? Well, it's not the reward, it's the amount. I mean, what's two quid nowadays? This round's gonna cost me nearly two quid. That's just three drinks. Well, how much do you think I should be offering, then? At least ten. People are very mercenary, Mr. Sugden. They won't put themselves out for peanuts. I think you might be right. I'll go and alter the amount I put on the card in the cabin. I mean, what's money where Randy's concerned? 
Hey, 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 hey. You're laughing at yourself again, Dad. Now, you know what them two fellas in the white coat said they'd do if they heard you at it again. Look, I'm happy, aren't I? I mean, what started off to be one of the worst days in my life has just took a turn for the better. You watched me turn opportunity into hard cash. <laughs> Cheers, girly lad. Cheers. Too late, we're just closing. Don't want anything. What are you doing tonight? I don't know, what are you? Fancy going for a ride? Yeah, all right. Pick you up at eight. Yeah. Pete and Lorraine are coming as well. Are they? See you at eight then. Red Rack Corner. Is it true you get your meat pies from a bloke called Sweeney? Did you know the back wheel of your motorbike followed the front? Not very witty, your boss, is she? See ya. See ya. You could have said no, just for once. Yeah, well, I could have done. I mean, I were going to. I were going to stay in tonight, but... What well, you got in there, Jack? You don't see slippers. Let us just say it is bread about to be cast on water. More like a contract you're just about to pull on a vulnerable old soldier. Ah, shut up, Curly. Yeah, getting ten quid off him, and it only cost you two. That is the perfect definition of business, sunshine. One pint, sir? Oh, thanks a lot, Billy. Where's the lasses tonight, then? <laughs> Deserted me. Hey, they haven't set up in a pub on their own with Fred, have they? He couldn't run an ice cream cart, that fella. Oh, bit of a sore point, Fred, eh? Billy Boy has got a sore point right there, let me just chin. <laughs> What's all this about? Are we just settling down in front of me telly? It's nothing to do with me, mate. My dad'll explain. I understand he want to see me. Percy, have I got a surprise for you? <laughs> oh. Guess what is in that shoebox? Shoes? Guess again. Your bird's egg collection. Warm, warm, very warm. It's only little Randy. Is it? Yeah. I was driving down past the red wreck and I had to stop at this junction. What flies over my shoulder through the open window? Randy. Fancy. Right, so there he is. You can fork out the 15 quid. Ten. The 15 quid. Ten. You can fork out the 10 quid reward and there he is and you can take him away. It's all yours, then. Huh? I'll have to check it, Tim. Oh, naturally. Hmm. That's not Randy. Of course it is. It's a green and yellow flaming budgie, isn't it? That's as maybe, but it's not Randy. Randy's at home in his cage. A little girl found him and brought him back just after tea. She wouldn't take any reward. Sorry. I'll get back to my telly. Yeah, sure. Ever been had, Dad? As ye sow, so shall ye reap, Mr yeah, Duckworth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anybody want to buy a champion budgie? <laughs> hey, Billy, it looked great behind your bar. You could even teach him how to call time. No time, mate. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mavis, this is my sister, Edith. Edith, this is Mavis. Ah, pleased to meet you. So, you're the medical worker. Pardon? Feeding Derek down at last. Oh. <laughs> I didn't think he had it in him to get married. How did you manage it? Uh, well, it didn't exactly happen overnight. Nothing ever does with Derek. <laughs> anyway, congratulations. And the best of luck. Well, thank you very much. Uh, what would you like to drink, Edith? Oh, I don't mind, so long as it's strong and there's a lot of it. Oh, what do you say, Mavis? <laughs> yes. Well, go on, surprise me. Like with a large whiskey. It's all right. I'm not going to get sloshed tonight. <laughs> Old woman. Actually, between you and me, it's the best thing that could have happened to Derek. What? Getting himself a wife. Oh, well, I'm glad you think so. He likes to think he's very independent, but he's not. Mother spoiled him, you know. Did she? When she died, he tried bringing his dirty vest and his weak chest round to me. But I'm too busy getting on with my own life. I'm a health visitor. Yes, so I believe. I didn't know that uh, Derek had a weak chest. Well, he says he has. Mother was forever rubbing it with Vic. Edith? Excuse me, more guests. Oh. oh. 
Oh, this is so Just a little something for you and your intended. Oh, you shouldn't have. Well, it's only a bottle of port. <laughs> and I brought you a whale. A whale? Oh, yeah, it's only a little tedgy one. I thought it'd look well on your mantelpiece. Oh, I'm sure it will. Thank you. Um, well, let me get you a drink. What would you like? Oh, I'll have a port and lemon. Her oh, glass of lemon. beer will go down very oh, nicely, though. Derek! Oh, hi. <laughs> Hello. Oh, and um, Edith. Lovely. These are two friends of mine, Mr. Roberts and Mrs. Ogden. This is Derek's sister, Edith. Oh, call me Alf, as everybody else does. <laughs> yeah, as well as a lot of other things. <laughs> and I'm Hilda. Hilda, oh, you do. <laughs> Do you come from round here, Edith? Oh, just up far with Wayne. Oh, we're right oh, in the station. I think I probably yeah, did. Yes, she is in, Victor, but um, at the moment she's otherwise engaged. Is she in the bath or something? No. What then? Actually, it's her engagement party. Now? Right this minute. Well, you know what they say. There's no show without punch, is there? Victor! Victor! Yes, darling, what's your pleasure? Quite in here tonight, aren't you? I was hoping to find someone to talk to, cos my husband's working late and my mother-in-law's snoozing. You can talk to me, love. <laughs> You're as bad as Fred, you are. I don't know anybody called Fred. Uh, I'll have an orange juice, please. Right, then I'm off. Yeah, you're not having another one. I was hoping to get you drunk, so you might buy me budgie off me. I wouldn't want to spoil a beautiful relationship. Aye. Excuse me. I'll see you. See you. I hear you've been giving my daughter some advice. Have I? Yeah, she says you think I'm out of order warning her off this land she's seeing. Well, I don't think I am. And I'm much better qualified than you, love, to know what's best for my own daughter. All right. Hey, I love. Thanks. I'm beginning to wish I stopped at home. <laughs> I'll see you later. Great. Well, I couldn't stop him coming up. <laughs> well, I know you couldn't. His eyes don't look hurt to me. A bit wild. Who's the lucky one, then? You're just talking to me. Sorry, pardon. I say two fellas after you. Can't be bad. Does she know some of me, don't you think, Rita? <laughs> it's about time. It's a very nice occasion, this. Yes, sir. Grand as old, Tilda. Yes. It'll be the first time you'll have met Davis, I suppose, Edith. Yes, though I've heard a lot about her from Derek. Well, it seems like for years. Oh, yeah, well, it's been off and on more than an old shoe. <laughs> It's a nice... It's All right. Oh, I'm fine. Another drink? Uh, I'm quite finished this, thanks, old man. So, uh, you're a friend of Mavis's? That's right. From way back? Uh, not very. What? Uh, a couple of years? Oh, that explains it. Explains what? Me not knowing you. No, I haven't seen much of Mavis this past two years. It was, um, well, you might say, a fallow period in our relationship. Too busy carving a career. A sales rep, aren't you? Area sales manager. You? Local government. Only in body, not in spirit. Oh? I'm a potter, really. Are you? Are you from round this way? Saddleworth. Saddleworth? Yes, I prefer living in the country. I can breed in the country. Mavis is a great country lover, too, you know. Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, we've got a lot in common, Mavis and I. Really? Soulmates, you might say. That's why we're such good friends. Like the same things. Books, writing, countryside, anything which gives wing to the spirit. People might not think this of Mavis, but beneath that conventional exterior, she's a real little bohemian. Do you know, we went uh, camping together last year. No, I didn't know. And do you know what? We did a dry room with the tent, I mean, before we actually went. And we pitched it right here, just where we're standing now. And then we, we crawled inside and we imagined we were up Helvellyn. Oh, yes, sir. There's a lot more to Mavis than meets the eye. Much more. Next, today on Plus, the soap hour continues with Emmerdale, whilst over on Breeze, how to be a well woman.